realized he had to set the girl free. Can you figure out what Zoe cooked? The girl boiled eggs. A man on a motorbike crashed into the window of Mr. Ruby's store, grabbed several expensive watches, and drove away. When the police arrived, Mr. Ruby told them that he was almost sure it had been his nephew, Patrick. The officers went to visit the guy. Because of a heavy downpour, it took them one hour to get there. Patrick was at home, together with his friend. Look at the weather! I haven't been outside since yesterday! Patrick's friend confirmed his words, but the police didn't believe their story and arrested Patrick. Why? The guy's helmet is hanging on his motorbike. If it had been there since the previous day, it would have been filled with rainwater by now. Four friends went to a cafe together. Two of them, Linda and Mike, ordered a large pot of blueberry tea. Kirsten took some lemonade and Oscar opted for orange juice. Half an hour later, Linda and Mike lost consciousness and were rushed to a hospital. When the police analyzed the tea they had drunk, they found poison in it. The main suspects were, of course, Kirsten and Oscar. Why didn't they drink the tea? Kirsten said that she didn't like tea with berries. And Oscar explained that he was allergic to blackberries. Who is the culprit? It's Oscar. He said he was allergic to blackberries, but the tea his friends drank was with blueberries. David worked at a construction site. Once, someone attacked him and the unconscious man was taken to a hospital. Police officers who arrived to investigate the case had three suspects who also worked at the construction site. Alex, Ryan, and John. Alex said, I was putting all tiles on the roof when the accident happened. Ryan confessed that he'd been sleeping under the tree. And John claimed that he'd been laying bricks at that time. Can you figure out who's lying? Alex was the one to hurt David. The building has no roof yet, so he couldn't be putting tiles up there. You've bought a cute little rabbit at a pet store. The animal can breed every two months, and every time it will deliver five babies. How many rabbits will you have in a year? You'll have just one rabbit. If you want to have little bunnies, you have to buy two rabbits. Look at these people attentively. Who is a mer person? Pay attention to every little detail. It's the guy on the right. Look, his hands are webbed. Allison won the main prize of $1 million on a game show. But when the shooting was over, it turned out that the host of the show oh no. had disappeared, together with the prize. The police managed to log into the computer in his office. They saw that the host had sent this message to his girlfriend. It looked like the host had told his girlfriend where he was going. The police went to the airport, but which flight was the host going to catch? Can you figure it out? Now let's see, the first two letters of Atlas are A-T. If we take three letters from the word land, it'll leave us with L-A-N. And the two first letters of tattoo are T-A. Together, these letters make up the word Atlanta. Hurry to the gate, officers! Jack got lost in the woods. Suddenly, he saw a castle. The man rushed there and was greeted by the owner of the castle. You have to answer just one question. If you win, I'll show you the way out of the forest. But if you lose, you'll never leave my castle. Jack agreed. The owner asked, There are four mirrors on the wall. One of them reflects fire-spitting dragon Niren. The second, beautiful mermaid Laura. 
In the third mirror, you can see a terrifying vampire, Sam. And in the fourth, Unicorn David. You have to figure out which reflection isn't real, and fast. The reflection of Vampire Sam isn't real. Vampires can't be reflected in mirrors. A businessman arrived at his office after a long trip and discovered that some important documents had disappeared from his desk. He immediately called the police and a detective arrived shortly after. After interviewing all the workers, he had a list with three suspects on it. They were Emma, the accountant, Sophia, the receptionist, and James, a sales manager. But each of these people claimed that they hadn't even been inside the businessman's office. Still, it didn't take long until the detective figured out who was lying. Can you do the same? The thief is James. Both women wear high heels in the office, but the footprints on the floor are obviously left by sneakers. You throw me when you need me and pick me up when you don't need me. Can you figure out what I am? Right you are, I'm an anchor. How can you increase 66 by 1.5 if you aren't allowed to make any mathematical operations? Hurry up and crack this riddle! Just turn 66 upside down. It was Mr. and Mrs. Smith's wedding anniversary and Mrs. Smith was going to put on diamond earrings her husband had presented her for their wedding. But when she opened her jewelry box, she saw that the earrings weren't there. She called her daughters, Dora and Laura. I've told you so many times not to touch my things. Who took my jewelry this time? Dora exclaimed, I haven't touched your jewelry box. Laura also denied taking her mom's stuff. I don't even wear earrings. Can you figure out which girl is lying? It was Laura who stole the earrings. Her mom didn't specify which piece of jewelry was missing. Erica works at the Railway Security Service. This morning, she received an emergency alert. There's a person with fake documents trying to escape to Canada by train. Erica and her colleagues found three suspects who look almost the same. Can you identify a criminal just by looking at one's passport? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. So this documents are fake. Bob is a college teacher. He invited his worst student, Dan, for a conversation. Bob wants to test the guy's logical thinking. He says, If you tell a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell the truth, I'll still expel you. What should the student say to stay in college? Bob should say, I'm telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox uh -oh. because it cannot be a lie or the truth. Nancy has 10 bowling balls. Her brother Josh decided to check her intelligence. So he asked Nancy to place those 10 balls in five lines, such that each of the lines has exactly four balls on them. Can you help her accomplish this task? She should draw a 5-point star and place the 10 balls occupying the corners and the intersection points. Voila! 5 lines with 4 balls in each row. Kevin has been hitchhiking in a desert for hours. Finally, one driver stopped and said, I will give you a ride wherever you want, but first, you gotta crack my riddle. Which letter can make the road larger? Can you help Kevin solve this task?
The letter B can turn road into broad. Alex is a shepherd. He had 30 sheep, out of which all but 13 ran away. Can you calculate how many sheep Alex has now? He has 13 sheep. The phrase, all but 13 ran away, actually means that all except the 13 escaped. Take a look at these three prisoners. The first guy pushes the iron bars. The second guy shakes muscles with dumbbells. The third guy sits and reads a book. There's a picture hanging on the wall. Can you say for sure who's likely to escape? Take a closer look at the third guy. Can you see the sand under the painting? He must be digging a tunnel and covering it with a picture. So he's the one who wants to escape. All Becky's shoes are black, except two. Also, all Becky's shoes are red, except two. And all Becky's shoes are yellow, except two. Can you calculate how many shoes Becky has in general? Just three, one of each color. Dr. Smith prescribed Dan expensive vitamins. He gave Dan two bottles labeled R and B. The pills are entirely identical. The doctor asked Dan to take one pill daily from the R bottle and one pill from the B bottle. He can't take more or less than that. One morning, Dan was taking out the pills. He took out one pill from the R bottle as usual. And then, by mistake, he took out two from the B bottle. Now Dan has no idea which pill is which. He can't just throw away the expensive pills. What would you suggest? Dan should cut each of the three pills in half and put each half in two piles. Now each of the two piles will contain half of pill R and two halves of pill B. Now, Dan should take one more pill from the R bottle cut it into half, and put the two halves in two different piles. This way, we'll know that each pile will have two halves of pill R and two halves of pill B, or one complete R pill and one complete B pill. Dan can take one pile today and keep the second pile for tomorrow. I am red, but I smell like blue paint. What am I? Red paint. Timmy's mother has three sons. She named her first son April. The next one's name is May. Can you guess the youngest son's name? And the correct answer is Timmy. Pretty obvious, huh? Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? The reflection in the mirrors doesn't match reality. What about this picture? Can you see anything odd? These two ladies seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on this guy's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had big scratches, unless they're a zombie. The king of octopuses has sons, who have six, seven, or eight legs. The one with seven legs always lies, but the one with either six or eight legs always tells the truth. On a certain night, four sons meet and chat. The blue octopus says, we have 28 legs altogether. The green one says, we have 27 legs altogether. The purple one says, we have 26 legs altogether. And the red octopus says, we have 25 legs altogether. Can you identify the color of the sun who's speaking the truth? The green sun is telling the truth. To prove it, let us first assume that one of them is telling the truth. Obviously, 
Three of the four sons lie as they disagree with each other. Let's suppose that the blue octopus is telling the truth. In that case, he has either six or eight legs. And each of the other octopuses is lying, which means they have seven legs. In this case, the total number of legs will be six plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 27 legs or eight plus seven plus seven plus seven equals 29 legs. But the blue octopus said that they have 28 legs altogether. Therefore, he lies. Now we can follow the same logic and check the remaining three suns. And we'll find out that only the green octopus is telling the truth. I have an eye, but cannot see. I'm faster than any man alive, but have no limbs. What am I? The correct answer is hurricane. I know a word of letters three. Add two and there will be fewer. Can you guess the word? The correct answer is few. I have a beard without being a man. I'm green, but I'm not a lizard. I'm white, but I'm not snow. Who am I? The correct answer is Leek. A wicked wizard has imprisoned Billy in his tower. Billy ran away from the wizard, but now he needs to choose between these three doors leading outside the tower. There's a toxic gas behind the first door. The second path is full of poisonous scorpions and snakes. And behind the third door, there's a pride of lions which haven't eaten for three years. Which way is the safest? The third one. The lions can't starve for three years and still be alive. Monica adores real estate. She used to spend $300,000 per house and acquired property worldwide. She realized that she had too many houses at one point. So she started selling them at $30,000 per house. How is that possible if she was obviously losing money? Before selling her property, Monica used to be a billionaire. Since she started losing money, she became only a millionaire. I'm full of holes, but I still hold water. What am I? A sponge. Sarah's mother has two sons and one daughter. The son's names are Josh and John. What's the daughter's name? Sarah, you're in a room with three monkeys. One monkey has a banana, one has a stick, and one has nothing. Can you tell for sure who's the smartest primate in the room? You! The sun bakes me, the hand breaks me, the foot treads me, the mouth tastes me. What am I? The correct answer is grapes. Bobby participated in a brain teaser contest. The host blindfolded Bobby and gave him a basket with 25 red apples, 47 green apples, and three yellow apples. What's the minimum number of apples that Bobby has to pick to ensure that there are at least two apples of different colors? he should pick at least 48 apples. There's a slight chance he might pick up 47 green apples in a row. The Smiths are having a family dinner. A grandfather, a grandmother, two fathers, two mothers, one brother, two sisters, two sons, two daughters, one daughter-in-law, and one mother-in-law need to sit at a table. There are only seven chairs available in the room. How many more chairs do they have to borrow to sit down all together for the dinner if everyone requires a separate chair?
They don't need additional chairs. There are only seven people. A grandfather married a grandmother. They have a son who has married a woman. Together, they have a son and two daughters. So there are only seven people at the dinner. What has to be broken before you can use it? Any ideas? An egg. Betty is a famous artist and blogger with more than 1 million subscribers. She has recently hired an agent to sell her works. The agent created an online shop with Betty's exclusive paintings. One day, Betty woke up and saw that most of her followers recently unsubscribed. Can you guess what happened? Take a look at the items in Betty's shop. Van Gogh painted the starry night, not Betty. The agent tried to sell fake art through her shop. The next day, Betty visited her favorite cafe. She made an order and went to the ladies' room to wash her hands. She found this beautiful ancient necklace. Three people approached her to claim the jewelry. Helen said, This piece belonged to my grandmother. Emeralds fit our green eyes perfectly. Give it back. Fiona said, my necklace used to have a weak lock. It must have been broken when I was combing my hair. Julia said, Hey, it's mine. I lost this necklace in the ladies' room. Who should Betty give the necklace to? Helen mentioned emeralds, but the stones are red, not green. Julia was so sure that she'd lost the necklace in the toilet, so why wouldn't she go pick it up herself? Fiona was the only one who knew about the weak chain lock, so she's the real owner. Betty returned to her table. She noticed that someone had taken a bite out of her bagel. Betty was shocked and questioned other customers. Derek said, Lady, I'm a billionaire. I don't need to steal other people's food. Zach said, I'm allergic to gluten. I don't eat any pastries. Sheila said, I saw a weird hungry guy running around the cafe and asking for money. He must have bitten your bagel. Who's lying? Zach, if he doesn't eat any pastries, why did he order pancakes? Fiona wanted to thank Betty for the necklace, so she bought her lunch. The women sat down together and began to talk. Betty asked Fiona about her job. Instead of answering, Fiona showed her family tree. Can you help Betty figure this out? Fiona is a witch. Her brother is a policeman. Their dad is a doctor. And their mother is a football player. Betty got very excited. She begged Fiona to teach her magic crafts. But Fiona hesitated. She wanted to test her potential student and offered Betty to solve this equation first. Can you help her nail this task? Many people fail to solve this equation because they don't pay attention to details. In this puzzle, Every emoji, including the witch, wand, and the broom, symbolize different values. Before calculating the equation, let's find out the value of single things. First, calculate the value of one witch. It's 15. Now let's figure out the value of one wand. As you can see, it equals 7. And now, let's do the same thing to the brooms. This task is tricky because there are four brooms in this equation. So, if 4 brooms are worth 12, then 1 broom will cost 3. Now let's take a look at the final line. The witch doesn't carry around any broom or wand. Therefore, the value of an empty-handed witch is 5. And now, we're ready to solve the equation. And the correct answer is 73. Great job! Betty gave the right answer, and Fiona took her home. There's a beautiful garden maze on Fiona's land. She teleported Betty to the center of the maze and gave her this map. Betty must find a black cat. 
Otherwise, she's gonna stay in this trap forever. Can you help Betty out? Here's the way. Betty wanted to run back to the castle as soon as possible. Suddenly, a creepy zombie started chasing her. It looked hungry. Betty was running away and noticed three paths. The first path was covered by poisonous acid. The second path by bugs and maggots. And the third path by thorn bushes. Which way should Betty choose? Betty should choose the second path. Bugs and maggots are gross, but they're harmless. Fiona asked Betty to serve dinner for a witch party in her castle. Can you count how many witches have arrived at this event? There are 13 witches in this picture. This one is not a witch, it's a garden scarecrow. Betty needed to go to the store to buy some ingredients for dinner. She began to write them down. Milk, lemon juice, eggs, butter, oranges, baking soda, cashews, and vinegar. What was Betty making? Have you guessed? Betty was making a shopping list. Betty served the witches the first meal. Can you guess what exactly? The correct answer is onion rings. Here's a second serving. Can you guess it? It's blueberry. What about this dish? What do you say? It's popcorn. Here's the next one. Did you get it right? It's a strawberry milkshake. Fiona asked Betty to bring dried flowers to cook a love potion. Fiona stores all ingredients in her warehouse, but as soon as Betty entered the warehouse, the door locked behind her back. Betty searched this area and found some old furniture and an antique mirror. Suddenly, she noticed three doors, but there was a dangerous monster behind each door. The first monster can turn any living being into stone. The second one is very angry and strong. And the third monster has venomous teeth. Can you help Betty choose the right door? <laughs> Betty should open the first door and show the mirror to the monster so that it would turn into stone. Then she can escape through the first door. Betty took her phone and ran into the forest. It was pretty dark and scary. Betty stepped on a wasp nest. Wasps were everywhere. What should Betty do? Wave her arms to scare the wasps? Run away as fast as she can? Or walk away slowly? What do you think? The safest choice is to walk slowly. Waving hands and running is too dangerous. The wasps will get angry and sting her. Betty has returned to the party, but when she saw the crowd of witches by the fire, she got scared and ran away. Why? This lady by the fire is a ghost. See, she doesn't have any feet and levitates. Betty decided to hide in the castle. She wanted to call the police, but she couldn't find her phone. Betty questioned three witches. Georgina said, Who dare you? I use telepathy. Phones and gadgets are for losers. Lillian said, I was outdoors singing with other witches. 
I didn't see or hear anything weird. And Nina said, I don't need to steal, honey. I can manifest any amount of money anytime. Who's lying? Georgina, take a look at her ears. She's wearing earphones, but she said she didn't use any gadgets. Fiona got very angry when she found out that Betty had interrogated her dearest friends. Betty apologized. Fiona said, Okay, I'll let you stay, but you must answer three questions. Here's the first one. I've been here for a million years, but I'm never more than a month old. What am I? Have you guessed it? The correct answer is the moon. Here's Fiona's second question. I build castles and I tear down mountains. I make some people blind, but I help others see. What am I? The correct answer is sand. And the third question is, I can be long or I can be short. I can be bought or I can be grown. I can be painted or I can be bare. I can be round or I can be square. What am I? And the answer is fingernails. The party was still on. Fiona went upstairs to change her dress. In five minutes, Betty heard a scream from Fiona's bedroom and found her unconscious on the floor. Betty asked one question to four suspects. What have you been doing for the last five minutes? Jenny was roasting marshmallows by the fire. Gemma said, I've spent the last 30 minutes in the pool. Sarah said, My frog Fluffy ran away to the garden. I've been looking everywhere but unfortunately, I couldn't find it. And Nancy was flying on her broom around the house and filming the party on her phone. Who's lying? Sarah, her frog, is sitting in her pocket. Suddenly, someone turned the lights off. Betty woke up in jail. She found this clue on the floor. It said... Explain this code and you'll be free. Can you help Betty? Here's the answer. Betty was running through Fiona's basement and noticed two more prisoners. She figured out that one of them was planning to escape. Can you guess who? The first prisoner. There's a hole behind the toilet that he started digging. Betty got out of Fiona's castle and ran away through the forest. Can you tell what's wrong with the forest? Look at the trees. They all cast shadows, but the big oak tree's shadow is in the wrong direction. Rows are flying in the sky, one ahead and two behind, one behind and two ahead, one between two and three in a row. Can you figure out the exact number of crows? Three. They're moving one after another. Barista needs to fill two sacks with coffee from another sack of a similar size. Can you figure out how to do it? Easy. Put the empty bags into one another and then fill them with coffee. Two mothers and two daughters enter a coffee shop and order three cappuccinos. Each gets one. How's that possible? They are a grandmother, a daughter, and a granddaughter. 
Can you write a number that consists of 11 thousands, 11 hundreds, and 11 digits? Many people think it will be 111,111, but in fact, it's 12,111. Rachel's computer gets broken, but she has to do urgent work. So she decides to use her husband's laptop instead. But unfortunately, he has changed the password. Luckily, Rachel finds a note with a clue nearby, SBDIFM. She enters the code, but it doesn't work. Can you help her crack the password? To solve this puzzle, Rachel needs to change each letter with the previous letter in the alphabet. S implies R, B implies A, D should be replaced with C, and so on. And the final password is Rachel. Oh, so yes. cute. Peter, Jenny, and Timothy are trapped in three separate cages. Peter's cell has an explosive in it. Jenny's cage is filled with toxic gas. And Timothy's cell is covered with ice. Can you guess who has more chances to survive? Timothy. It's just ice, so it's gonna be melting soon. Timothy won't have time to freeze. Yeah. Gerald is 100 years and a few months old, but he only had 25 birthdays in his entire life. How could this be? The man was born on February 29th, so his birthday only takes place once every four years. The police find out that several criminals are going to leave the city by train this morning. Security guards at the railway station detain four suspicious people and examine their baggage. Can you help them figure out who's innocent? This guy carries toothpaste without a toothbrush. Oh. A supposedly blind person carries a flashlight. Oh. And why would a bald man need a bottle of shampoo? Oh. It seems only the guy on the left isn't a criminal birds sat one on each tree. One didn't have a place, but when they sat two on each, one tree was left free. Can you figure out the number of birds and trees? Four birds and three trees. A farmer has 350 oranges. Hmm. The challenge is to divide them into three piles so that one pile would be four times smaller than the largest one. And another pile two times smaller than the largest one. How many apples would be in each pile? Zero. The farmer has 350 oranges, not apples. David invites his friends to spend a weekend at his house. They come along and have tons of fun. Unfortunately, a terrible storm starts the day before they have to leave. It's pouring with rain, and strong winds are breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. The next morning, the weather gets better, but David discovers that his gold watch is missing. It was a very expensive gift from his grandpa. David asks all his friends just one question. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Monica says, I spent most of the day in my room studying. Mike says, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. And Mia says, I don't even know what your watch looks like. After hearing their answers, David knows for sure who's lying. Mm. Can you figure it out? There was a power outage. It means Mike couldn't play the electric guitar. Also, David said nothing about the important thing being a watch. So how did Mia know it? Therefore, Mike and Mia stole the watch. Can you create a square by moving just one matchstick? You need to think outside the box to crack this puzzle. Here's the solution. This square is tiny, but it still matches the task. Rob runs a restaurant. He has four barrels of excellent kombucha. He's saving them for the upcoming anniversary party, which will start in 24 hours. Rob enters the storage room and sees a note near the barrels. Oh. It says, 
I put a magic spell on one of the barrels. Anyone who drinks kombucha from it will turn into a mermaid in 10 hours. Good luck. Luckily, Rob has one friend, Shelly, who's dreaming to be a mermaid. Yes. Rob decides to test the kombucha on her before the party starts. Can you figure out a way to check four barrels in 24 hours? Rob should give Shelly kombucha from the first barrel right away. Then the second barrel's kombucha one hour later, and the third drink two hours later. If Shelly turns into a mermaid in 10 hours, it means that the first barrel is under the spell. If she changes in 11 hours, it's the second barrel to blame. And if she becomes a mermaid in 12 hours, it's the third barrel. But if Shelly stays the same, the fourth barrel is enchanted. A computer store manager calls the police and yells, Help me! My store has been robbed! The officers arrive at the place immediately, but they can't see anyone. Suddenly, they hear someone banging on the door in the corner of the store. They unlock it and see an anxious lady. It's the manager. Someone locked me in the storage room. It must be one of the shop assistants. Huh? The police officers ask the lady to call her employees for interrogation. The manager says, Just a second, I can't find my phone. Oh, it's over here. She didn't even start to call before the officers arrested her. Why? She was locked in the room, and the phone was lying on a counter. How could she call the police? Where does Friday actually come before Thursday? Take your time to think it over. Friday always comes before Thursday in the dictionary. Nina sneaks out of the house late in the evening to meet her secret boyfriend. She thinks that she's very careful and quiet. But all of Nina's roommates know about her plan. Also, they know that Nina will return at midnight. They decide to make a bet. The one who would notice Nina first, when she starts climbing the fence, would be the winner. This person would be free from chores for one month. To avoid falling asleep, Bella switches on her favorite series. Nora goes to the kitchen to make snacks for everyone. Wendy takes a seat in the living room with a book. And finally, Kelly goes to her bedroom and starts meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nina when the time comes? Kelly. Her eyes will be used to the darkness and she will see better than the others. Lily is a cool pastry chef. She's been working hard in the kitchen all night to create a special wedding cake. Finally, it's ready. Yeah. Lily puts it in the fridge and goes outdoors to take a break. Fifteen minutes later, she returns and nearly faints. Some monster had ruined her masterpiece. Lily questions three suspects. Diana, the barista, says, I opened the fridge an hour ago to grab a new carton of soy milk. Your cake was fine. Paul, the bakery's manager, says, I didn't touch the cake. I was talking on the phone with our clients. And Will, the janitor, says, I entered the kitchen five minutes ago and noticed some chocolate on the floor near the fridge. I opened it and saw the broken cake, but it wasn't me. Who's lying? Diana. An hour ago, the cake wasn't finished yet, so she just couldn't see it in the fridge. Mary parks her car near her favorite store. Can you see anything weird here? Take a look at the reflection in the window. The color of her car doesn't match reality. A small town hosts a winter festival with an ice sculpture competition. The top three sculptures made it to the final. The party goes well and everyone has fun. Oh no, someone has sprinkled the sculptures with salt. They're losing their shape and falling apart. The local sheriff interrogates three suspects. Brian says, I didn't do it, I was too busy building a snowman. Gemma says, I was far from the sculptures taking selfies with my granny near the dining area. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And Dan says, I believe it was Brian. Hmm. The winning sculpture was created by his ex-girlfriend. They don't get along. After hearing what they had to say, the sheriff knows for sure who's guilty. What about you?
Take a look at Gemma's selfies with Granny. There's a large salt shaker on the table in the first picture. And in the second selfie, the very same salt shaker is absent. It's hidden in Gemma's jacket pocket. She sneaked the salt and ruined the sculptures. Amy is visiting an unfamiliar city. She sees four magical creatures in this area and freaks out. Can you see them too? Take a look at this tree. It's a wood goblin. There's a transparent lizard crawling up the skyscraper. Also, there's a leprechaun hiding in the flower bushes. And there's a pixie driving this taxi. Diana returns home from work and discovers that someone had broken her antique teapot in the kitchen. What? She gets furious and interrogates three suspects. The housemaid says, I was cleaning the second floor all day long. I didn't even enter the kitchen today. Hmm. The gardener says, I was picking lilies in the garden in the morning. I only entered the kitchen once to put fresh flowers in the vase. The teapot was fine. And the cook says, I was preparing dinner in the kitchen. And then I went to the bathroom to take off my uniform. When I returned back to the kitchen, the teapot was already broken. Who is lying? The gardener. Take a look at the flowers in the vase. They don't look fresh at all. Bob used to be a farmer in another country. He kept chickens. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a bigger farm in another country and moved there. Soon Bob got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't give up and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Here are three matches. Oh, really? Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number has to be standard six? Hmm. The matches make a perfect Roman numeral three. So all you have to do is bring the bottoms of the first two matches towards each other, and you've got a Roman numeral six. You have two sand hourglasses, a 7-minute one and an 11-minute one. Using just these two sand hourglasses, how can you measure 15 minutes? Step 1. Start both hourglasses at the same moment. Step 2. Wait until the 7-minute hourglass times out. 7 minutes have passed. Let's move on to step 3. Restart the 7-minute hourglass. At this time, 11-minute hourglass will have 4 minutes left to time out. As soon as the 11-minute glass times out, invert the 7-minute hourglass. At this point, 11 minutes have passed. After inverting the 7-minute hourglass, it will now have 4 minutes left for time out. After these 4 minutes are out, the total time will be 15 minutes. Detective Smith was called to investigate a burglary at the city's museum. A priceless diamond disappeared and the thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Detective Smith gathered three suspects. The security guard, the museum's curator, and a visitor. The security guard said he only left his post during lunchtime, and he could swear that the diamond still wasn't missing at that time. The museum curator spent the day guiding a tour of the museum for a foreign group. They came to see the diamond at the beginning of the tour and it was still shining bright in its place. The visitors said he only popped in for a quick visit and didn't even pass through the Metzi Isle where the diamond was kept. After these three interviews, Detective Smith found the thief. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. First of all, he knew the exact location of the diamond inside the museum. Plus, take a look at that string he is fiddling with in his left hand. Detective Smith pulled it from under his sleeve and... Voila! The diamond was attached to it! I guess he didn't have time to go home and get rid of the diamond, huh? Julie and her friends decided to spend the weekend at a cabin in the woods. They arrived on Friday evening and spent the night playing board games and telling spooky stories. When they woke up on Saturday morning, they found that someone had stolen all their food supply. The door's glass was shattered. 
But other than that, there were no signs of who could have done it. So, the group decided to search the surrounding woods to see if they could find the culprit. Take a good look at the scene the group stumbled upon, and see if you can find out who took their food. What's that at the upper left corner? Those look like barefoot prints, huh? And not just one, but rather an entire family of bears. Oh, and they even left an Oreo wrapper on the ground as evidence. Yep, these grizzlies were the culprits for sure. On a snowy winter afternoon, Dr. Brown was resting in front of the fireplace. Suddenly, somebody threw a snowball at his window. The hit was so strong that the glass shattered. Dr. Brown stood up just in time to see three neighborhood boys running away. They were brothers with the names John Smith, Mark Smith, and Dave Smith. The next day, a paper note was left on Dr. Brown's door. There, it was written, Smith, he threw the snowball. Dr. Brown immediately knew which brother had done it. Can you figure it out too? It was Mark. You see, the note said, Question Mark Smith. He threw the snowball. But the boys were clever and put a var instead to test Dr. Brown's detective abilities. A man carrying two bags of sand crosses Genovia's border every day on a bicycle. Every time customs officers stop and search him to see if he's trying to smuggle anything illegal. But the officers can't find any proof that the man is a smuggler. The man laughs and crosses the border successfully, smuggling an item per trip. Can you figure out what he's smuggling? That's easy. He's a bicycle smuggler. He distracts the guards with two bags of sand. But every day he is crossing the Genovian border with a new bicycle. Smart guy, huh? Mrs. Pinkface is the world's fastest robber. She works alongside the criminal mastermind Zebra Mask. But Mrs. Pinkface was recently caught and put in jail. She and her partner in crime had already set up a plan in case this happened. Zebra Mask will pass outside the prison fence and send Pinkface a signal. 45 seconds after the signal, he will turn off the electric fence, giving her a few seconds to make her prison break. The thing is, Pinkface doesn't have a clock. She only has a lighter and two fuses. The fuses are flammable and she knows they both burn for precisely one minute. They won't burn evenly, so if she cuts them in half, one side might burn for 40 seconds, while the other burns for 20 seconds. How can Pinkface use the fuses to time exactly 45 seconds and make her unique prison break? Here's the key insight. If Pinkface lights the same fuse on both ends simultaneously, it will burn out in precisely 30 seconds. To time the last 15 seconds, she will have to light the second fuse. She can light both ends of the first fuse at the same time to time 30 seconds and light the end of the second fuse. When the first fuse burns out, she'll know 30 seconds of the second fuse is also burnt. So, by lighting the other end of the second fuse, she'll be able to time 45 seconds and make her jailbreak. You just came back from a long holiday trip. You bought a new suitcase to store all the new things you got. But when arriving home, you forgot the code to open it. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone to help you decipher the code of the lock. 682. One digit is right and in its place. 614. One digit is right but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are right but both are in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right but in the wrong place. What's the three-digit code? Zero four two. Friday morning started busy in Somerville. 
the police station got a call saying that a woman had just robbed a bank and was seen entering Sunset Elementary School. The police chief hurried over to the school and found there were two teachers present that morning. He immediately knew which teacher was the thief. Can you tell who it was? Take a look at the second teacher's long sleeve shirt. It has a little bit of cash peeking out of it. She's most certainly the thief. The Apex 18 space station called NASA's headquarters to report a crime. On a recent mission, astronauts recovered a valuable piece of evidence that could prove there was life on Mars. Andy, the mission chief, said he put the piece of rock inside a safe located in the storage room. The next morning, he went to the storage room to put on his astronaut suit and noticed that the safe was open. And oh no, the rock was missing. NASA conducted an online investigation to find out who the thief was. Paula said she wasn't feeling well the day before, so she spent the day in her room. James said he spent the previous day fixing a broken solar panel outside the spaceship and didn't see anything. Rebecca spent the previous 24 hours talking to NASA's Space Center to resolve a problem. Can you tell who is lying? It's James. If he went outside to check on solar panels, he first needed to go into the storage room to put on his spacesuit. Plus, there's a rock-shaped item in his left pocket. He must be the culprit. Tuesday morning, Amy got a call from her boss, Tom. He was in distress because a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Amy immediately went there to question the employees. She soon gathered three suspects. Elijah said he had spent the previous evening at the movies. Mason had taken his girlfriend to dinner, and Evelyn had visited an art gallery. It didn't take long for Amy to understand who was lying. Why? It was Elijah. Take a close look at his ticket. The date is for Sunday and not the night before. This means he's probably the one lying. Peter was lost in the woods when he encountered an evil magician. The magician cast a spell on him that transported Peter to an empty room inside a huge tower. To make things worse, the evil sorcerer put the tower on fire. The room Peter was in had no doors and only a small window. Thankfully, he found three magic potions that could maybe help him escape. If he drank the first potion, he would get incredible physical strength. If he chose the second potion, he could summon any animal he wanted to help him. And if he drank the last potion, he would turn into a vampire. Which potion should Peter choose? Well, no animal could help him escape the tower, and even if he had all the strength in the world, he wouldn't be able to beat the fire. But if he turned into a vampire, then he could transform into a bat and fly away through the little window. So the third bottle it is. Katie got lost in the desert. She walked for hours when suddenly, she came across a huge oasis. But to reach the main waterfall, where she could drink some water, she had to cross a bridge. There were three bridges leading to the same place. The first bridge was far from the ground, and its rope looked like it could rip at any second. The second bridge had some hungry-looking alligators crawling on it. The last bridge stood above a lake full of poisonous water plants. Which bridge should she choose? The last one. The bridge stands above a poisonous lake, but she won't touch the water when crossing it. Rupert was working in his office when a huge power shortage turned off all the lights in the building. He heard footsteps approaching behind him, and the next thing he knew, he was feeling dizzy. Rupert passed out and woke up in a tiny room that had nothing other than a metallic door. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. He noticed that beside the door, there was a little device where a red sign appeared, asking for a password. 
Below the device, there was a piece of paper with the following hint. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rupert read the note aloud several times before he finally figured out what the password was. Can you guess what password he typed into the device? He typed in one time the number two, three times the number four, five times the number six, and seven times the number eight. Phew, that wasn't obvious, huh? Bill and Jonah found themselves stuck inside the cavern of the Great Genie. There was nothing there but a wall with three buttons. There was a red button, a yellow one, and a green. Somewhere on the floor, they found a note that read, T D U P T. R N O R E H E B S S T E. They clicked one of the buttons and managed to open a hidden door on the wall. Which button did they choose? The red button. They unscrambled the words on the note and discovered it read, "Press the red button." Miss Taylor is the owner of a boutique that produces and sells expensive ceramics. On a Friday, when the working week was almost finished, she went to deposit the day's money inside the safe, and was shocked to find out it was all gone. Someone had stolen it. Miss Taylor suspected it should have been one of her workers. She asked each one of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she had been prospecting for new clients. Jake, the potter, said he always made one cup a day, and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Lily, the designer, said she had been working, but she also admitted she hadn't been really productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Jake. There are five working days in a regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Probably the day he used to steal Miss Taylor's money. A foreign tourist came to a police station. He said, "A guy with a tattoo and a long beard forced me to give him my wallet." The police officer told him, "Don't worry. The criminal is one of these quintuplets. They've already been arrested." You just have to identify the one who attacked you. Look at these men. Can you help the tourist figure out who the attacker was? Not this guy. He has a tattoo on his left arm. Not this one. He can only use one hand. This guy has a short beard. This guy is wearing a cast, which leaves us with this man. Now I've got a few Rebus puzzles for you to crack. How hard can it be? This Rebus is tasty. It stands for scrambled eggs. How about this one? It means misunderstanding between friends. Hmm, what could this mean? It's downtown. You're walking through the park when you hear footsteps behind your back, and everything goes black. When you come to your senses, you find yourself in a dark basement illuminated by fifteen burning candles. I'll set you free if you solve my riddle correctly. But if not, you won't ever leave this place. Oh no, there's uh -oh. someone in the shadows. You see fifteen candles. I'll blow out six of them. How many candles will remain? What's going to be your answer? If you tell the mysterious person that six candles will remain, they'll let you go. After all, the rest of the candles will eventually burn down completely. 
all but the six which have been blown out. Someone stole expensive jewelry from Mrs. Doris's hotel oh, no. room. It happened around 6 a.m. When the police came, the hotel owner told them that there was a heavy snowfall early in the morning. It destroyed all the evidence. Suddenly, one of the police officers spotted an infamous criminal. He had been accused of committing several robberies, but always managed to get away with it. The man denied being at the hotel at the time. I only came half an hour ago, he claimed. The police officers immediately understood he was lying. How? There's a thick layer of snow on the criminal's car. If he had been driving to the hotel, there would be no snow on the hood. It would have melted or got blown away by the wind. And since it's sunny now, it can't be new snow. Clara was in her hotel room when she heard someone knock on her door. She looked through the people and saw an unknown man standing outside. He introduced himself. Hi, I'm the hotel manager. Sorry to bother you, but our database has crashed. Could you let me in to confirm some information? Clara immediately rushed to her phone and called the security. Why? The badge on the man's shirt says Chloe Smith, and that's a female name, which means the man is a fake manager. Damien had problems with money. That's why he had to sell the only valuable thing he had, an expensive painting of a 17th century artist. The man who bought it showed the canvas to his friend, a police detective. After looking at the picture attentively, the detective said that the painting was a fake. How did he figure it out? There are electric power lines in the picture, but they didn't exist in the 17th century. Now, look at these teachers. Can you figure out which of them is a millionaire? A, B, or C? Ha! Tricked ya! It's actually not a riddle, but a mini psychological test. If you decided that teacher A is a millionaire, you're amazingly energetic. You're also spontaneous and always ready to explore new places. If your choice was teacher B, big noisy parties aren't for you. They can leave you emotionally drained. And if you thought the millionaire was teacher C, you're a social butterfly and the soul of any party. So, how true is this? Tell me in the comments below. Yeah. Detective Thomas went camping with his friends. At one point, he went to get some firewood. When he got back, he saw one of his friends, Alice, lying on the ground unconscious. There were three other people in the camp. Julie, Alice's friend, Mary, Alice's sister, and Adam, Alice's boyfriend. Thomas asked all of them to show him their belongings. Look at their stuff and try to figure out who has something to do with the state Alice is in. It's Julie. If you look attentively, you'll notice a picture of Adam among her things. She must have a crush on him. She likely hurt Alice out of jealousy. Eve went on an expedition to Antarctica with a group of scientists. Three days into the expedition, Eve woke up and found out that all of her oh, no. colleagues were missing. The only thing she found was an envelope. Inside, there was a letter. Apparently, a crazy scientist had taken her friends, and now Eve could only save them by cracking his riddles. Here's the first one. How many months have 28 days? The number you'll get is the number of feet you'll need to walk before you start digging. Eve knew the correct answer. All 12 months have 28 days. She walked 12 feet and started digging. The next clue was waiting for her there. It was a bag with a book, a can of paint, a screwdriver, and a note that said that the scientist had locked Eve's friends in his lab in a cave. 
It didn't take Eve long to find the cave, but there were four entrances leading inside. Passage 1 was guarded by venomous spiders. Passage 2 had a huge and pretty aggressive monkey blocking the entrance. In Passage 3, Eve saw a mammoth. And at the entrance to Passage 4, there was a bottomless well. Uh -oh. Which tunnel should Eve choose? The third one. Mammoths have been extinct for thousands of years, so the animal the girl sees is likely a hologram. Eve entered the lab and saw a dog inside, but it wasn't a regular dog, it was a robot dog. Barking, it ran after Eve. The girl remembered she had a book, a can of paint, and a screwdriver in the bag she had found. What can she use to get rid of the robot? Eve should open the can with paint and throw it at the robot. Since the paint is liquid, it will likely cause the robo-dog to short-circuit. Eve breathed out in relief and started looking around. Suddenly, she saw a key on the floor. The girl picked it up and went to the next room. As soon as she walked in, the door closed behind her back. And a bizarre-sounding voice started to speak. In 15 minutes, toxic gas will fill the room. Your only chance to survive is to take the antidote before the gas is released. At this moment, Eve spotted a small box. She opened it and saw four pills and an instruction. Take four pills, one every 15 minutes. Will Eve have time to take all the pills before the gas fills the room? Yes, absolutely. The first 15 minutes will start after she takes the first pill. So taking four pills will take her 45 minutes. Eve got out of the room and finally found her friends, all tied up. She immediately set them free, but they needed to get out of there as soon as possible. They saw three doors leading outside. Behind the first door, there were hungry polar bears. Behind the second door, the air was so cold it was impossible to survive there. And behind the third door, there was a waist-deep lake with piranhas. Uh -oh. Which way should the friends choose? The third one. The lab is in an ice cave, remember? The water in the lake will be frozen. They will simply walk on the ice and get out of the cave. Freedom! Echo is taking part in a game show. He has a chance to win $10,000. Finally, it was time for the last task. The guy has to put his head in one of three boxes. In the first one, there are hanging electrical wires. In the second, there are hundreds of Venus flytraps. In the third box, there are dozens of scorpions. Which box should he choose to win the prize and stay safe? He should choose the second box. Venus flytraps don't harm people. Emilia's uncle was a mysterious man working on some secret project in his lab in the basement. He never allowed the girl in. So one day, when the man went to get a cup of coffee, Emilia broke into his lab. The door immediately closed behind her back and locked automatically. The lab was a teleportation machine. It could take Emilia to one of three places. The first place was the ocean where the Titanic had sunk. The second one was the city of Pompeii. A volcano erupted there many centuries ago. The last place was the Bermuda Triangle. What is the safest place for Amelia to go? I'd pick Pompeii. Going to the Titanic or the Bermuda Triangle would take her to the middle of the ocean. And the volcano in Pompeii erupted centuries ago. Now, it's safe to be there. Gideon was locked in a dark dungeon. There were three ways out. Behind the first door, there was a room full of poisonous bees that could make people hallucinate. Behind the second door, there was a room without oxygen. 
Behind the third door, there was a room full of unfriendly aliens. Which way should he choose? The room without the oxygen seems the most promising option. Gideon can hold his breath and quickly walk through the room. In a quiet neighborhood, someone broke into Mr. Edwards' house at night and stole his collection of jewelry. He reported the burglary, and a detective came to investigate the case. First, he visited the neighbors. The detective asked them what they were doing the night before. Kira said she'd been watching TV all night and hadn't gone anywhere. Abel said he'd been on the plane, getting back from Madrid. He just returned home a couple of minutes ago after a month in Spain. Chris said that he'd been sleeping. After the interrogation, the detective knew who the thief was. Have you figured it out? This was Abel. He said he'd just come back home, but look at his kitchen table. There are fresh fruits lying there. If he had been absent for a month, they would have gone rotten by now. It was a cold and rainy day. Detective Callum was in his office when he got a call from a hotel's cleaning man. He said he'd found an unconscious woman in one of the rooms. Detective Callum arrived immediately. By that time, the woman, whose name was Anna, had already come to her senses. The detective asked if there was someone in the city who could help her. Anna said she had a sister, but the woman didn't know anything about her arrival because Anna wanted to surprise her. The detective called Anna's sister and said, Your sister arrived at the city, but someone attacked her. Please come as soon as possible. As soon as the woman arrived, she was arrested. Why? Anna said that her sister didn't know she was going to visit her. Detective Callum didn't specify where exactly the sister should come, but she still managed to find them. For some reason, she knew where the place was. Autumn is an archaeologist exploring an ancient cave. After a month down there, she found a hidden place with three chests. One of them had gold in it. But if the woman picked the wrong chest, she'd Yay! get locked in the cave forever. Uh oh. The note on the first chest said, the gold isn't in chest two. The second note said, the gold is in chest one or three. And the last one said, the gold isn't here. Which chest should she open? If the gold isn't in the second chest, it must be in the first or the third one. But the note on the third chest claims the gold isn't there. So it must be in the first chest. Ben works at a VIP club. His job is to not let any young or suspicious people in. Every day, some visitors with fake IDs try to sneak in, and Ben has to detect which documents are fake. Here are some IDs. Your task is to help Ben decide if people they belong to can enter. Here, look at this one. What will you say? It seems like she was born on the 28th of the 13th month. This ID doesn't look real. Great, another one for you. Should Ben let this guy in? This person is supposed to be 46 years old, but in this photo, he looks like a teenager. I think Ben shouldn't let him in. This is suspicious. What can you say this time, in or out? This ID seems real. I think it's safe to let her in. Another person, another decision. Does anything bother you here? Nope, he seems fine to me. One more to go. Should Ben let her in? Look at her address, Canada, USA. This is weird. I bet it's a fake ID. So I'd say, nope. 
Mason went to visit his grandma, who lived in a different part of his neighborhood. While he was in her house, his bike got stolen. Mason called the police. He said that he'd seen the bike had been taken by Mr. Jones. It was the neighbor the guy had always been arguing with. Mason and a detective came to visit Mr. Jones. The police officer asked if the man had stolen the bike. Mr. Jones denied doing it, saying he'd just finished painting his fence. The detective believed him. Why? His story seems true. There's fresh paint on the grass by the fence, which proves that Mr. Jones indeed painted it just recently. When Quinn returned home after walking her dog, she found out someone had stolen her favorite bracelet from her room. Oh, no. Her sister, Belle, also liked it. So Quinn went to find her and ask if she had taken the accessory. The girl ran into Belle as she was leaving the bathroom. Belle denied taking the bracelet, saying that she'd been in the shower this whole time. She didn't even have time to enter her sister's room. Quinn sneaked a peek into the bathroom and realized Belle was lying about taking a shower. How did she understand it? If Belle had really taken a shower, the bathroom mirror would be foggy. But look, it's absolutely clear. The city's richest lady, Mrs. Anderson, came to watch a football game. She was sitting on the best seat in the first row. In the middle of the game, she noticed that someone had stolen her diamond necklace. Luckily, a detective was sitting right next to her. He started to observe people around. One person became his main suspect. And who do you suspect? Look, there's a guy dressed as a football player with the number 7 on his back. But as you can see, number 7 is playing the game. Someone must have dressed as a player to blend in. Evie was living with her partner. She didn't want to tell her parents about her relationship yet, so she kept it a secret. Once, her mother came from another city to visit Evie. The girl's partner was on a business trip at that time, so she decided to pretend that she lived alone. And still, her mother could tell that Evie was dating someone. How did she figure it out? There are two toothbrushes in the bathroom. One of them is likely to belong to someone else. Alice and Dakota work in the city's animal shelter on the weekends. Alice walks the dog and Dakota feeds the cats. Who does something wrong? Dakota. She gives the cats dog food. Sophie and Ever are having a picnic in the park. Sophie is talking to her brother on the phone, and Ever is eating berries from a bush. Who is not smart? Ever. There is a warning sign saying the berries are poisonous. A family is working in the backyard. Atlas is mowing the lawn, and Cassidy is watering the flowers. Can you tell who is doing something wrong? Atlas. It seems that his lawnmower doesn't work properly because the grass doesn't get cut. Tatum woke up in a hospital. Two men came to visit her. Both of them claimed to be her doctor. Can you tell who the real doctor is? Look, this man's name tag says Olivia, which means the real doctor is on the right, and the one on the left must have stolen someone else's uniform. Two students, Elsa and Isla, are spending the afternoon in the park. Elsa is having lunch sitting on the grass, and Isla is reading on a bench. Who is less smart? Isla, the bench has a sign, wet paint. Mrs. Evans came to a cafe to have lunch and saw her daughter, Scarlett, sitting at one of the tables. She came up to her and asked the girl why she wasn't at school. 
Scarlett said that her last class had finished a bit earlier, and that she came here just a couple of minutes ago to get an iced coffee. She promised to be gone in five minutes. Still, her mother didn't believe her and grounded Scarlett for missing school. Why? The ice in Scarlett's coffee had already melted. This means that she'd been here for a while, way longer than she claims. Melanie was having her written economics exam. One of the questions she had to answer was, what is the risk? She answered the question with just one word, but still got the highest mark. What was the word she wrote? She must have written the word this. Jessica, Pam, and Serge have just met in the hall of a business conference. Take a closer look at their hands. Can you guess which one of them is a millionaire? Serge is wearing a Versace watch, but it's probably a fake because the word Versace is written with an extra letter. Pam is wearing plenty of jewelry, but if you take a closer look, you'll see scratches. It's gilded jewelry. And Jessica is wearing only one silver Tiffany bracelet, and she's the most suitable candidate to be the millionaire. Rick found a huge yellow diamond on the floor of a fancy boutique. Three women came over to claim it. Daisy showed her earrings with yellow diamonds and said the ring was a part of her jewelry set. Glenda said it was her engagement ring. Jill said the ring belonged to her grandmother. Help Rick to find out who's lying. Daisy's earrings are framed in rose gold, while the ring in white gold. It's not a jewelry set. Glenda is already wearing an engagement ring on her finger. So, Rick should give the ring back to its true owner, Jill. Kim is a manager in a luxury restaurant. She came back from a break and saw a quarrel between the waiter whose name was Tom and a customer, Nancy. Nancy had claimed that she had ordered a combo lunch meal, but Tom said that she didn't order any food but a croissant. Kim knew exactly who was lying. How did she guess? Take a look at the announcement. Combo meals are served between 1 and 4 p.m., and the clock shows 6 p.m. Nancy just couldn't have ordered the lunch because it was too late. Look at the picture. Find the missing piece. This cube on the right fits perfectly, but you gotta rotate it first. Bus station guard Stephen received an anonymous call. One eccentric rich guy decided to prank his friends heading to a mountain resort. He hired a criminal to hijack the bus along with all the passengers and go on a beach party instead. Once Stephen heard this message, he ran into the parking lot and saw five people near the bus heading to the mountains. Help Stephen to determine which of the passengers is the possible criminal. Look at the guy on the right. He's not dressed for skiing. He's wearing beach clothes. Freddy was hired to decorate a fancy boutique. He was taking pictures when he heard screams. Freddy saw two women fighting and pulling an expensive handbag. Both women, Rose and Lily, said they've put the bag on the register stand to buy it later. But Freddy knew who was lying. How? Take a look at the picture. Lily's right arm is in a cast, and the bag is standing right behind her broken arm. If it was Lily's bag, she would probably put it on the left side using her healthy arm. Therefore, the bag belongs to Rose. Look at the picture carefully and choose an image identical to this example. Well done! Image 4 is identical, but it's rotated by 180 degrees. 
detective got a call from the villa of a famous billionaire, Mr. Green, who disappeared this morning after he left home to play golf with his coach. Detective questioned all the witnesses. The housemaid said Mr. Green had breakfast and left at 10 a.m. Mr. Green's girlfriend said she left for a photo shoot early in the morning before he woke up. Mr. Green's personal golf coach said he had spent all day at home. The detective realized that one of the witnesses was lying. Who? The coach was lying. He had an appointment with a client. Anna was visiting her granny in the country. Granny decided to cook a special dinner and sent Anna to the forest to collect some mushrooms. Granny gave Anna a picture of specific mushrooms that she had to pick. This was very important because the forest was full of dangerous mushrooms. Help Anna to choose the right mushrooms. Well done! Mushrooms number 3 are perfectly safe. George and Henry met a gorgeous singer, Tara. Both men fell in love at first sight and invited her on a yacht. When all three arrived at the pier, each guy began to claim that he was a millionaire and owner of the yacht. Help Tara to find out which one is a liar. Look closely at the yacht. There is a plaid jacket that matches Henry's pants perfectly. At the same time, the watch at George's hand is cracked and shows 8 a.m., although it's evening time. It's unlikely that a millionaire would wear a broken watch. Mike and Wendy expected the newborn to arrive next week. Mike was painting walls but accidentally pulled his back, fell, and passed out. He woke up in the hospital. Three women were standing in front of his bed. Each claimed that she had been Mike's wife. Help Mike to remember his real wife. The belly of the first woman is too small for a woman who is giving birth next week. The second woman is wearing high heels and her shoes are buttoned. The third woman's sandals are unbuttoned. She couldn't button her shoes on her own because of her belly. Look at the picture attentively. Find the odd kitten. That's right, the second kitten's paw is different from all the others. Tina had five sisters. One night, she woke up in the middle of the night because she heard a loud noise from her sister's bedroom, as if someone had slammed the window. Tina suspected that one of her sisters left a bed after lights out and hurried to check them. Tina inspected all five beds. Each sister seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Help Tina to determine which sister went for a walk after lights out and made so much noise. It was this sister in the third bed. Take a closer look. She crawled under the blanket wearing her dirty sneakers. Diana, her fiancé Tim, sister Sarah, and their puppy came to visit the groom's mother, Miss Wilson, at her house. Next morning, Diana found out that her puppy was gone. Diana questioned oh no. all three family members. Tim was hanging out with his ex-classmates. Sarah demonstrated a small kitty. She spent her time purchasing a new pet. And Miss Wilson tried to stay away from the puppy because of her severe allergy. Who is a liar? Miss Wilson lied about her allergy. She wouldn't have been able to stand next to the kitten. Betty had three daughters. One morning, her neighbor Lauren said she had seen one of Betty's daughters at a nightclub last night, but she wasn't sure which one exactly. Betty didn't allow her daughters to visit nightclubs, so she questioned all of them. Sam spent all night in a library. Gemma on a date with her boyfriend, Alex, but she returned home before midnight. Kelly said she was watching a series all night and didn't leave the house. Who is lying? Sam is lying. Look at her face and clothes. 
She's covered with glitter. Who needs glitter in a library? An elephant was sleeping and having a very weird dream. When he woke up the next morning, he found out that his shadow was gone. He was looking for his shadow all day and finally met a wizard. The wizard confessed that he had stolen the elephant's shadow. But the wizard was ready to give it back if the elephant managed to recognize it. Help the elephant to make the right choice. Yep, the second shadow fits perfectly. Kelly received an anonymous message that one of her teachers is a vampire. Look at the picture. Can you help Kelly to identify the real vampire? It's over here. She has an eye in her meal. Jane called the police to report that someone had broken into her house and taken her precious jewelry collection. She was washing her hair in the shower when she heard footsteps downstairs. She went down and found out that the safe was opened and all the jewelry was gone. When the detective heard this story, he arrested Jane immediately. Why? Jane couldn't hear footsteps while washing her hair in the shower. Look at the picture attentively. Find an odd B. That's right, this B has fewer stripes than the others. Jack and Sarah went to the countryside to celebrate their anniversary. At the local market, they bought a sweet watermelon. They sat on a beach, cut it up, and enjoyed it. The watermelon tasted sweet and delicious. Each of them ate three wedges, but in 20 minutes, Sarah got sick. Jack took her to the hospital. The doctor said the watermelon was poisoned. Sarah and Jack ate the same food and drank the same drinks. How is this possible that Jack feels well? The poison was in the seeds. Sarah ate them and Jack threw them away. Look at the picture attentively. Can you identify a dog among all these pandas? This little body is definitely not a panda. Jennifer has just won an important competition. Two women have come over to congratulate her. Each claims to be Jennifer's mother. Who is the real one? Although the woman on the right has the same hair color as Jennifer, the woman on the left is her real mother. They have similar birthmarks on their cheeks, and she's truly proud of her daughter. Look at this picture. It seems to be just a crowd of people chilling in the park. But one of them has just arrived from another country in a time machine. Who is it? This guy on the bench, he's wearing a toga. Tom failed a test, and Ms. Anderson called him to her office to talk about it. What's wrong here? The door hinges are on the wrong side of the door. Mrs. Wilson entered the classroom and noticed someone had drawn her caricature on the blackboard. She questioned her student Bobby, the school cleaner Jack, and her colleague Tom. Everyone claimed they hadn't done it. Who is lying? It's Tom. He's holding a piece of chalk, and he's the only one who's tall enough to have drawn this. What's wrong with this picture? They're playing basketball with a soccer ball. Luke fell from his bicycle and lost his memory. Look at the picture attentively and help Luke figure out who his real father is.
Although Luke has the same hairstyle as the second man and the same outfit as the first man, his real father is the third guy. They have similar hair color and freckles. Who doesn't work as an art teacher? The first lady has paint on her outfit. The second one is wearing cute handmade bracelets and carries a big bag of art supplies. The third woman is wearing high heels and a white coat. And a fourth lady is wearing sneakers and a hairband. The third woman has nothing to do with art. If you look closely, you'll see that her white coat is a medical gown. Jake and Sarah are chilling at a luxury resort after an exhausting business conference. But something is wrong. What is it? The water in the pool is frozen. And what's wrong with this picture? Unlike her reflection, the woman isn't actually wearing any necklace. Let's check what your magic power is. Don't forget to keep track of your points. A. What's your favorite time of the day? Morning, evening, night, afternoon, I can't choose. B. What superpower would you rather have? Teleportation, super speed, telepathy, super strength, x-ray vision. C. Congratulations, you've got it now. But with great power comes great responsibility. How will you use it? Marry my crush, rule the planet, get rich, Become a hermit in the desert. Save people. D. How do you get along with other people? I'm respectful and neutral. I can't imagine my life without my friends. I dislike other people. I'm slightly introverted. I enjoy the company of other people. E. What's your favorite color? Black, red, blue, yellow, purple. F. A magician needs a crystal. Pick the one you like most. Red ruby, purple amethyst, white diamond, rainbow opal, black agate. G. What's your source of inspiration? Love, competition, art, nature, games. H. Which one is about you? I want to be popular. I'm pretty smart. I stay away from drama. I want everyone to be happy. I'll do anything to win. Now count your points and find out your magic power. 8 to 14 points, telekinesis, the ability to move and manipulate objects. 15 to 20 points, the magic of elements. You can control fire, water, air, and earth. 21 to 26 points. Love magic. You have the ability to create perfectly matching couples. 27 to 33. Hypnosis. You can create very convincing illusions. 34 to 40. Healing. Your energy heals bodies and hearts. Look at the picture attentively. 
Can you see a car that came from a different time? Right, here it is. Look at the picture. What do you think is happening? Who is lying? If you chose option A, you're probably a very independent person. You prefer not to ask others for help even when you need it. And if you opted for option B, your family is the most important thing for you. You choose to care for others even if they're wrong. Gemma went to a restaurant with her fiancé, Mike. Soon after they finished a delicious meal, Mike felt sick. Gemma called the ambulance and police. The detective interrogated the restaurant staff. The waiter said that she hadn't touched the food. She just took the order and passed it to the chef. The dishwasher said she always washed the dishes thoroughly with high-quality soap. The chef said that he had prepared the meal according to the order. Who is lying? The chef. Take a look at his locker and his tattoo. He is Gemma's ex-boyfriend. He poisoned Mike out of jealousy. Will worked at a coffee shop. One day, his wife, Diana, came over to visit him. Which of the customers is his real wife? Will is married to the woman on the right. They have similar tattoos on their necks. Other girls are random customers who just happen to have the same name. Greg and his daughter Mia went for a walk after spending a year apart. Look at these six people very closely. Which couple is the father and daughter? Right you are! Mad scientist Fred accidentally revived a mummy. His creature escaped from the museum. Following the mummy, Fred ran to the park. Look at this image. Can you help Fred find the mummy? It's over there, behind the ice cream stand. George dreams of being in a relationship, so he's downloaded a dating app. Three girls have caught his attention. Lily is an artist who loves cooking and traveling. She has a cute cat. Jane is a yoga teacher and vegan enthusiast. She's afraid of heights and loves old movies. Nancy is a teacher. She loves reading and dancing and often goes hiking with friends. Which profile is fake? It's Jane's profile. If she's afraid of heights, why is she sitting on the roof in one of her pictures? Liza suspected that her husband Dan had been lying to her and decided to follow him. Instead of meeting with friends, Dan spent the evening at a restaurant with a mysterious woman. Liza couldn't see her face. She only spotted a purple hairband and red hair. When Dan left, Liza entered the restaurant. She wanted to talk to the woman. But she saw three ladies with identical hairbands. Which of them had dinner with Dan? It's this lady. The bun was on the right side of her head, and her hair didn't stick out. Stephen received an anonymous message, which said that some guys were planning to rob his house during his birthday party. Look at the guests. Which one is the thief? It's the woman on the left. Take a look at her ears. She has ear pods and is talking to someone. Also, she is wearing a wig. Look at these burly Vikings. Can you see anything suspicious? This big guy is wearing sneakers. These shoes are from a different era. Can you spot an alien among the customers of this cafe?
The alien is hiding in this woman's bag. Ava arrived at her granny's farm and immediately spotted something very weird outside. Can you figure out what's wrong here? Look at the spots on the cow's body. Those are butterflies. Tim and Claire had been planning their wedding for ages because they wanted everything to be perfect. Finally, their dream came true, and they got married. But something's not right in this picture. What is it? Look at the cake. It's for a birthday party, not for a wedding. Olivia left the supermarket, but returned a minute later because she had forgotten her wallet. Unfortunately, it was already gone. The police arrived and questioned three suspects. Sylvia, the cashier, said she hadn't seen the wallet after Olivia had paid. Ben, a pilot, said he hadn't seen the wallet because he'd left his glasses at home. And Jill, the manager, said she had been in a different part of the store and hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who stole the wallet? It was Ben. He doesn't seem to see much without his glasses, so he can't be a pilot. But why would he lie about that? Billy and his mother entered a pet store to choose a puppy. But Billy noticed something very weird right away. Can you spot what's wrong here? A peacock is sitting in one of the cages. Look at this picture. Can you spot which woman plans to go home by bus? This woman left her coat in a car, while the second woman is probably waiting for the bus. Can you identify which woman has spent more money on her home than the other just by looking at their rooms? This room belongs to the woman who spent less money. She bought her furniture at a big discount. Look, you can still see price tags here. Kelly, Jackie, and Nancy are having weddings on the same day. Can you spot what dress is the most expensive? Although Kelly's dress looks fantastic, it's several sizes larger than she needs. She must have bought it at a sale, and there were no other sizes left. There are stains and holes on Jackie's dress, so it must be secondhand. Therefore, Nancy's dress is the most expensive. Let's check how good you are at spotting small details. Which bill is fake? This bill has an obvious mistake. What about these two? Can you spot a fake? This one. The portrait doesn't belong here. What about euros? Can you see any difference? This bill is fake. Its design doesn't match the original. Now check these bills. This one is fake. Look at the words. They don't belong here. Diana is a young and ambitious entrepreneur. She wanted to find investors for her business project, but she spent all her savings on research and didn't have enough money even to afford a ticket for a business conference. So she climbed through the toilet window. The conference manager caught her on camera and sent a guard to one of the rooms where Diana might be hiding. Help the guard determine which woman is Diana. Look, this lady's the only one who doesn't have a conference bracelet on her arm. A police officer noticed a criminal getting out of a window. The officer followed the criminal, 
but he was running too fast and managed to hide in one of the neighboring houses. Help the police officer identify where the criminal is hiding. There are no fresh traces around this house. No one walked around it for a while. There's a family in the second house. It would be impossible for the criminal to blend in. So, the criminal is probably hiding in the third house. Look at this house very attentively. How many ghosts do you see? That's right, 13. Susie decided to do a huge cleaning in her house. When her brother Tom returned from the gym, he screamed, ran out of the house, and began to dig in the garbage. Susie has accidentally thrown out his stuff that he still needed. Help Tom find these items in the trash. That's right, here they are. George and Vera went to a flea market. They are looking for a certain antique lamp as a gift for their grandmother. Help them make the right choice and avoid cheating. This lamp fully corresponds to the photo they have. Can you spot a ghost at this stage? It's hiding behind the curtain. Fred got a puppy and brought it to his home, which he shared with four other people. Six months later, Fred left for a weekend to visit his parents. When he returned, the puppy was gone. He questioned his roommates. Lily said she had spent the entire weekend at her boyfriend's place. Jack said he'd been allergic to animals and couldn't stay around them even for an hour. Henry, who was to take care of the puppy, just couldn't find the pet in the morning. Who's lying? Jack, how did he live with the puppy for six months with his allergy? Can you guess the country? China. Can you guess the country? That's right, it's Belgium. Can you guess the country? It's Spain. Can you guess the country? Japan. And one more. Can you guess this country? That's right. That's Iceland. Lisa and Mia are two sisters who usually spend their vacation together on the beach because they adore surfing. But this time, they decided to go on a secret snowboarding adventure in the mountains right after Mia's birthday. The sisters didn't say a word to their family and friends. Soon after, they arrived at the ski resort. They disappeared. The police examined the car and found some gifts for Mia. Which gift is suspicious? Leah's gift is suspicious. Nobody knew that the sisters had headed to the ski resort. Can you read this quote? It says, either you run the day or the day runs you. Tim woke up in a creepy house. The wicked witch was making a potion in the kitchen. She saw Tim and said, here's my dinner. Take a seat, I'll be back in a minute. Tim began to look for the exit and found three doors, but there's something dangerous behind each of them. A hungry wolf hid behind the first door, an evil vampire was standing behind the second door, and the third way was covered with fire. Help Tim escape safely. He needs to grab the garlic and walk through the second door. 
garlic will scare away the vampire. Jill and Christy were jogging in the street. Suddenly, a taxi drove past and splashed both of them all over with water from a muddy puddle. The ladies decided to finish jogging for today, said goodbye, and went to do some laundry. Look at the picture attentively. Can you spot who of the two ladies is rich? Jill is rich. Her clothes say Prada, while Christie's clothes say Prada. Can you see any number in this picture? It's 217. See? Well done! Jake threw a birthday party for his brother Gregory, but when he went to the kitchen to grab the cake, he saw a creepy note in the fridge which said, There's a ghost at your party. Jake ran to the living room to check the guests. Can you help him spot the ghost? This woman over here doesn't stand on her feet. Can you read this? It says Matrix. Jane woke up in a creepy laboratory. A mad scientist said, I'm gonna let you go if you make the right choice, and showed her three doors. But each door hid danger. Behind the first door, she saw poisonous gas that will make her unconscious in five seconds. The second door hid acid that burns everything out in five seconds. And the third door hid a pool with water infected with a dangerous virus. Which door should Jane choose? The third door. She can walk across the water on her high heels without touching the water. Look at these people. Can you place an apple in such a way so all the people but one see it? Where do you place the apple? Do you see any secret spots in the room? You have 10 seconds to figure it out. You don't need any special spots to fulfill the condition. Just place an apple on someone's head. Let's have a brief personality test. Can you see any weird elements in this picture? What detail did you notice first? A. A snowman holding a mug with a hot drink in its hand. B. A skier wearing a diver's costume and mask. C. A peacock hiding in the snow-covered trees in the background. If your choice is A, you're probably a very practical person. You have the talent to create a cozy and beautiful environment for your friends and family. If you choose B, you're smart and witty. You know how to invest your money and time wisely and dedicate yourself to really important things. And if you spotted the peacock, you're probably attracted to mysticism and art. You have a great imagination and unusual talent to see the details that other people don't see. Let's play a brief game. Answer these questions and see the results at the end. Would you rather have tattoos all over your body or have piercings all over your body? Option A gives you 10 points and option B gives you 20 points. Would you rather breathe with fire when you speak or breathe ice when you speak? If you chose A, give yourself 20 points and B brings you 10 points. Would you rather have your own spaceship or have your own planet? 20 points for A and 10 points for B. Would you rather have none of your dreams come true or have all of your dreams come true at once? Option A brings you 10 points and option B 20 points. Would you rather laugh uncontrollably when sad or cry uncontrollably when happy? 10 points for A and 20 points for B. You're very responsible, but anxious, or you live one day and trust your instincts. 10 points for A and 20 points for B. Do you care deeply about everything around you, or do you act and win without any doubts? 10 points for A and 20 points for B. You're ready to fight your corner, or you never show when you're hurt. 20 points for A and 10 points for B. Now. Let's count your results.
If your score is between 80 to 120 points, you have a calm and grounded personality. You can settle any conflict and bring peace, which is why your friends love you very much. It seems like you were born to lead, be responsible for others, and make things done. 120 to 160 points, you love adventures, and adventures love you. People admire your bright personality, even if they don't show that. A job in the field of entertainment, art, and tourism will be the perfect choice for you. Gemma entered a haunted house to take pictures. But suddenly, someone closed the door and locked her inside. She spent the whole day in total darkness. Then, the lights turned on, and a creepy clown appeared in front of her. There's a game I want to play with you, he said. The clown offered Gemma three bowls of soup. Two of them are poisoned, and one is safe. If she chooses the safe one, the clown will set her free. Can you help Gemma to make a wise choice? Ingredients in the first soup look like pills. The second soup contains suspicious blue carrots. Probably these are not safe, therefore the green one is safe. Can you find a hidden number in this picture? That's right, it's 9175. Can you find a hidden number in this picture? That's right, it's 341. But I'm sure you'll manage to spot a hidden number in this picture. Well done, it's 900. Take a look at this picture. Can you spot the owner of this dog? The red-haired lady is the owner of the dog. Take a look at the dog's collar. It has a picture of the owner. Paul worked in a large company. He left the office to have lunch one day, but he didn't find his car in the parking lot. He immediately called the police. The police soon found the car and started to chase the criminal. But the criminal left the car and ran to the park. The police caught three suspects. Jill said she was jogging in the park. Peter was waiting for his girlfriend. And Amy was walking and enjoying nature. Who stole the car? Amy, although she was enjoying nature, she had the same key that had gone missing. Can you find a hidden dice among all these pieces of cheese? It's over here. Although it looks like cheese, you better watch your teeth. Take a look at this pattern. Can you spot an odd detail? This bunch has more grapes than the others. Let's dive into the water for a while. The bottom of the ocean is full of life, but can you see any fish? It's hiding over here. Here's an eye challenge to read a blurred quote. Can you see this phrase? It says, well done is better than well said. Can you spot a panda and a soccer ball among all these snowmen? The ball is over here and the panda is hiding in the right corner. Look at this picture very attentively. Can you see anything dangerous in this picture? A snake is hiding in the bushes. One morning, Dan went to work as usual. 
he was a professional athlete and had a lot of awards. When he got back home, he found out that his most valuable trophy was gone. His gold medal was stolen. He called the police to report the missing medal. The detective interrogated Bob's neighbor and found four suspects, Rick, Tom, Sarah, and Molly. Each neighbor was carrying a house plan. Who robbed Dan? It was Sarah. Look, the house plan matches his house perfectly. Josh ordered some delicious sushi for a picnic outdoors. Look at the picture carefully. Can you spot any odd components in this meal? There's a green caterpillar in here. See? It probably fell from a tree. I wouldn't recommend eating that anyway. Someone painted the entire playground in the park with graffiti. The police questioned three suspects. The detective didn't tell them what he had suspected them of. He asked one simple question. What are you doing in this park? Robert said he was going to the birthday of his friend who lives near the park. Rick was looking for his missing dog who had run away this morning. And Derek was just having lunch in the park. He didn't see any graffiti artists. Who is suspicious? Derek. The detective didn't say anything about the graffiti, but Derek already started defending himself. Can you find the hidden gold coin? It's over here in the left corner. Look at this pattern very attentively. Can you spot anything odd? Someone has bitten this banana. Can you find the right shadow? The correct answer is D. Can you see any numbers on this picture? The correct answer is 1479. Look at these ladies. They all look nice, but the one you choose will tell you something about your personality. If you choose the first lady, you're very friendly and easygoing. Some people may think you're too naive, but you're just a very sensitive and curious person who sees life as an adventure. If you chose the second lady, you're a very loyal and passionate person. When you're in love, you become invincible. If you chose the third lady, it means you love to have fun and nothing can confuse you or make you feel down. Take a look at this picture. Can you spot a person who's in the safest position? The guy in the car is the safest. What number do you see in this picture puzzle? Number 517. Ryan wants to get a job at the museum. He successfully passed the interview, but his employer gave him a final test. Help Ryan determine which portrait is antique. This guy is wearing a fitness tracker, so he's probably not from the Middle Ages. The lady looks very authentic, but take a look at this lamp. Therefore, the portrait of this mysterious old man is original. Good job, Ryan. You're hired. Can you spot a penguin among the toucans? This guy over here. Jack and Jill just moved into a new house. While they were unpacking their boxes, the doorbell rang. They opened the door and saw three neighbors standing on the porch. Kitty brought cupcakes, Mrs. Green brought soup, and Amber brought an apple pie. 
help Jill and Jack identify the safe neighbor. Kitty's cupcakes contain cockroaches. Amber's cake seems to have some pills hidden in the apples. Therefore, Mrs. Greed with her strange soup is the most harmless neighbor. Can you find... Time is up, it's over here. Tina was preparing a birthday dinner in the kitchen. An hour later, her friend found her unconscious on the floor. She called the ambulance and the police arrived to question witnesses. The detective discovered three clues, one sneaker, one glove, and one slipper. Then he asked the witnesses to describe what they were doing while Tina was preparing the dinner. Soon, the detective found out who poisoned Tina. How did he know? Tina left a left shoe, left glove, and left slipper. She was trying to show that the poisoner was left-handed. What's wrong with this picture? If you saw a raccoon walking on two legs first, you're probably a very intelligent and strong-willed person. Friends can always count on your loyalty. If you promise something, you'll never break your word. If you spotted two sons first, you're a very calm and open-minded person. You prefer to avoid drama and unnecessary attention. But people come to you for advice and support because you view this world as a whole, and your opinions are sage and impartial. If you noticed a tree blooming in the middle of winter, it means that you're a very romantic and sentimental person. You feel the beauty of this world very intensely, and you need an environment that will nourish your soul and appreciate your uniqueness. With this kind of support, you can easily make this world a better place. Mr. Robinson is a successful businessman. One morning, he had an insight. Later that day, he invited two of his best managers to his office to discuss this breakthrough. Which of these men is Mr. Robinson? It's the man on the right. His suit jacket is on the boss's chair. It's an animal. Take away its last letter, and you'll get a water body where this creature usually catches fish. What is it? It's a seal, which transforms into the sea. Tilda's mother has seven daughters. The names of her six daughters are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Can you guess the seventh daughter's name? That's right, it's Tilda. It begins and ends with E, but only has one letter. What is it? The right answer is an envelope. Mrs. Sally baked her favorite chocolate cookies for a charity fair. She left them on the kitchen table and went to the garden. When she came back, all the cookies had been eaten. Oh, Mrs. No. Sally got very angry and questioned her three children. Her eldest son, David, said he hadn't eaten the cookies because he had spent all day in the garden. Her middle daughter, Shelly, wiped some crumbs off her face and said she'd just eaten a sandwich. The youngest daughter, Sarah, said she didn't eat sweets because she was on a diet. Mrs. Sally knew exactly who was lying. Have you figured it out too? It was David. Mrs. Sally was in the garden when someone ate the cookies. If she had seen David there, he wouldn't be among the suspects. Look at the picture. Can you find the odd star? The star that's different is in the left corner. 
The middle of this star is smaller than that of the rest. Delivery guy Robert entered a jewelry store to pick up an expensive diamond necklace for his boss. Saleswoman Daphne took the necklace out of the safe and was about to pack it in a box. But suddenly, the lights went off in the entire store. When the lights turned on a couple of seconds later, the necklace was gone. The alarm went off and the store door slammed shut, but only Robert, Daphne, and one other customer called Vicky remained inside. The police came over and interrogated all of them. Robert said he hadn't seen anything. Daphne said she had felt someone push her in the dark. They must have taken the box. And Vicky claimed she had been choosing rings for her upcoming wedding in the opposite corner of the store. The detectives immediately understood who the robber was. What about you? Vicky stole the necklace. She's already wearing a wedding ring on her finger. Kitty was walking in the woods and got lost. At one point, she met a magic fox. The fox said, If you can solve my riddle, I'll help you find your way home. But if you don't, you'll turn into a fox and stay here with me. Uh oh. When you have it, you want to share it. But if you share it, you don't have it. What is it? Kitty returned home that night. What did she say to the fox? It's a secret. If you share a secret, you can't keep it anymore. Look at the picture. How many squares do you see? A. 10 B. 5 C. 3 D. 6 You're right. There are 10 squares. You're supposed to count all the colors. Stephen had a dream of becoming a successful geologist and traveling the world. That's why he took a very difficult test and answered all the questions correctly. Professor Smith said he had one final question for Stephen. If the guy answered it correctly, he'd go on an exciting mountain expedition the following week. Mount Everest was discovered in 1852, but what was the highest mountain in the world before that? The next week, Stephen was proudly walking in the mountains with his colleagues. What did he say to the professor? Stephen said it was Mount Everest. It was still the highest mountain in the world, even though it hadn't been discovered yet. Jenny worked as a cleaning lady at a museum. Once, she found a beautiful diamond ring on a sink while she was cleaning the ladies' room. Three people showed up to claim it. Tyler said he hadn't seen the ring after visiting the bathroom. He needed to get it back to propose to his girlfriend. Kelly showed Jenny a tan line on her finger and said it was her engagement ring. Leah just asked whether there was an engraving on the inside of the ring. Jenny decided that the ring belonged to Leah. Why? Kelly's tan line was on the wrong finger. Tyler wouldn't have been allowed into the ladies' room, and Leah was the only one who knew the ring had an engraving. Susie entered an elevator and pressed the seventh floor where she lived. Suddenly, the elevator got stuck between floors. Susie got anxious and hit the emergency button. The operator said, I'll restart the elevator, but first, you have to solve my riddle. What can you hold without touching it? He asked. One minute later, Susie was on her floor. What did she say to the operator? Breath. You can hold it without using your hands. It belongs to your friend, but you use it way more than them. What is it? That's right, it's your friend's name. Alice was walking in a field and suddenly saw a white rabbit. She took a picture of the animal. Suddenly, the rabbit said, Hey, I can show you where the treasures are hidden. Alice got very excited. But then, her friend called her, and the rabbit ran away. When Alice returned to the field the next day, 
She saw nine rabbits. They all kept silent. Can you help Alice find the right rabbit? It's over there, in the right corner. What substance is there in each mug? One, it's not sugar or water. Two, it's not sugar or tea. Three, it's not tea or water. The first mug contains tea. The second mug contains water. And the third mug is full of sugar. Gemma overslept and arrived at her office an hour later than usual. She found a beautiful bouquet of roses on her table. Gemma got very excited when she saw a postcard tucked among the flowers. She reached for it and accidentally pricked her finger on a thorn. The card said the flowers were from a secret admirer. Gemma looked attentively at her three colleagues. Serge was on the phone. Will was printing out some documents. He winked at the girl, and Peter was making coffee. He offered Gemma to join him. At that moment, Gemma understood who had sent her the bouquet. How? It was Serge. He had a fresh scratch left by a thorn on his finger. Rotate it 90 degrees and it's everything. Cut it in half and it's nothing. What is it? When you cut 8 in half, it turns into two zeros. If you place it on the side, 8 turns into the infinity symbol. The more it dries, the wetter it gets. What is it? It's a towel. Tim loved his girlfriend Christy very much, so he went to a tattoo artist to get her name tattooed on his arm. But the artist turned out to be a crazy scientist. He used Tim's DNA to create two evil clones. When Christy came to the tattoo parlor to pick Tim up, she saw three identical guys. Help Christy uh -oh. determine which Tim is the real one. The guy on the left is the real Tim. He's the only one who has a tattoo. The clones aren't supposed to have any. How many months of the year have 28 days? All 12 months. Look at the picture. Which one is different? It's A. The color that should be at the top is at the bottom. Helen was a famous singer. When she was applying her makeup in the dressing room, her agent called her. He said that her song had become the main hit of the year. Helen told her assistant, Nick, hurry up, bring my best friend Lisa here. I want to celebrate. Nick came out of the dressing room and saw a crowd of fans in front of him. All of them wanted to get Helen's autograph. Nick asked, which one of you is Lisa? Each girl claimed she was Lisa. Help Nick to identify the real Lisa. The real Lisa is wearing a necklace with the left half of the heart on her neck. It matches the one Helen is wearing. Josh left his office earlier that day and decided to take a walk through the park. But suddenly, it started to rain. Unfortunately, Josh forgot his umbrella and hat at work. His clothes were soaked, but not a single hair on his head got wet. How did he do that? Josh was bald. Richard is a famous writer. On a Sunday morning, he finally finished his book and called his agent Stacy to share the good news. Stacy came to his house at 9 a.m. She found Richard unconscious on the floor. Oh, no. His laptop with the new book had disappeared.
Stacy called the police. The detectives arrived immediately and questioned everyone who had been in the house. The nanny said she had driven Richard's son to school. The gardener said he'd had a day off and spent time with his family. The driver said he had taken Richard's car to a car wash. Once the detective listened to everyone's stories, they knew who was lying. How did they find out? The nanny was lying. She said she had taken Richard's sons to school. But schools are closed on Sundays. Parents helped three friends, Brian, Aaron, and Henry, pack for their first day of school. Take a look at the guys. Whose parent is the most inattentive? Henry is holding a lunchbox full of delicious homemade food. Brian's textbook has a post-it note, Love Mom, on it. He probably has a caring mother. And Aaron is wearing a t-shirt over his jacket. Plus, his socks are different and untidy. It's unlikely that an attentive parent would have let him go out like this. Gemma woke up in a mysterious castle. She walked around the building searching for an exit. Soon, the girl got exhausted and hungry. That's when Gemma found the kitchen. She noticed four dishes on the table. They looked great, but she wasn't sure if it was safe to eat them. Help Uh Gemma to determine which food is safe. Take a closer look at the soup. Can you see human eyes in it? The steak has poison on it. There are spiders in the burgers. But the pasta looks pretty harmless. Rob and Jessica celebrated their honeymoon on a luxurious cruise liner. But suddenly, the weather changed and the ship got in a terrible storm. After the storm, Rob found his wife unconscious in their cabin. The safe was open, all their money and jewelry were gone. Uh Jessica told Rob that she'd hit her head during the storm and passed out. Rob investigated this crime along with the ship's staff. They found three suspects. Alex claimed that during the storm, he'd stayed in his bathroom because he'd been feeling very sick. Eric was lifting a barbell in the gym. He was a professional bodybuilder. And Tom said he'd been sleeping. Rob knew that for sure two people had lied to him. Who exactly? Eric couldn't have been lifting a barbell during the storm. And if you take a closer look at Jessica, you'll see that her pockets are filled with jewelry and bills. This means they're both involved in the scam. Three clocks are hanging on the wall, but only one of them is trustworthy. Which one? There's a spider web on the hands of the first clock. It means they haven't moved for a long time. The time this clock shows can't be correct. The second clock has some of its numbers positioned in the wrong order. 12 and 9 are mixed up, but the third clock looks trustworthy. Kelly invited her besties over to have a pajama party, but one of the people in the room is a thief. Who? The thief is hiding under the bed. Professor Harold left his office at about 9 p.m. He got caught in heavy rain on the way home. It was raining all night and the next morning, Professor Harold was late for work because of traffic jams. When he finally arrived at his office, he found that someone had broken the lock and covered all the walls with graffiti. The man interrogated four suspects who had recently failed his test. Jenny said she'd done yoga and gone to bed early. Rick was in the gym all evening. Lily was hanging out with her boyfriend in the park, gazing at stars. And Vicky worked the night shift at the movie theater. Who's lying? It's Lily. It was raining all night and she couldn't be watching stars in the park. Look at the picture. Can you find the odd flower?
It's this little one in the left corner. Four beauty pageant finalists were preparing for their last performance. Oh, no. Suddenly, Helen discovered that someone had ruined her evening gown. Helen questioned the other girls. Courtney said she'd been having her makeup done. The stylist could confirm that. Jennifer was too busy talking to the reporters, and Kelly was taking pictures for her Instagram. Who ruined Helen's outfit? It was Jennifer. Take a look at her hair. She's hiding scissors. Parents went to the country and left their son Jim and their dog Chuck alone for one evening. It was Friday night and Jim decided to throw a party. He invited three of his friends. When they came over, Chuck began to bark at the guests. So Jim locked the dog in his parents' bedroom. Half an hour later, Jim decided to visit the pet. But when he opened the door, he discovered the dog was gone even though all the windows were closed. Jim questioned his guests. Rob had been playing video games. Nora had been recording a TikTok dance in the living room. And Dan had been making snacks in the kitchen together with Jim. Who stole the dog? Jim's parents pranked him. See, they're hiding in the bushes and the dog is with them. Take a look at the picture. Can you spot a thief? He's hiding behind this tree. Look at these monkeys. Three of them are different from the others. Can you see them? This monkey is holding its baby, this one hiding a banana, and this monkey is looking in the opposite direction. Nurse Zoe received an anonymous message claiming that a vampire had broken into the hospital. While inspecting the wards, Zoe ran into three people in the hallway, Jules, Sam, and Debbie. Help Zoe figure out which of them is the real vampire. Debbie has red lipstick all over her face because she came over to visit her boyfriend, Sam. Look, they're secretly holding hands. Sam also has traces of Debbie's red lipstick on his face and neck. And Jules is carrying a huge backpack with a red stain. She must have stolen some donated blood. Look at the picture. Who will manage to escape the prison? the first prisoner. The lock is already open in this ward, and the second prisoner has yet to pick the lock. Look at these women attentively. There's a thief among them. Can you identify the criminal? It's the third woman. She's holding the phone that belongs to the fourth lady. Her portrait is printed on the phone case. Nancy has been dreaming of visiting an exhibition of her favorite artist for ages. When the exhibition finally arrived in her town, Nancy called three of her friends to invite them to go with her, but they all refused. Wendy said she was going to a concert and had already bought the tickets. Shannon said she was sick and didn't want to leave home. And Vicky had to take her sister to a dance class. Nancy got upset and decided to put off her visit to the museum until the next day. After a couple of hours, Nancy looked through her friend's social media and got very angry. One of her friends lied to her. Who was the liar? It was Shannon. She's in Wendy's picture from the concert. In the morning, Dr. Jill arrived at the hospital and went to the ward to meet new patients. When Jill saw them, she understood immediately that one of the patients was fake. Which one? It's the first patient. The hair color of the woman in the photo is different from hers. Detective Daniel was asked to come to a hotel. Someone had robbed the most expensive room there. 
the detective checked the footage from the security cameras but didn't see anything suspicious. He questioned the hotel guests. Karen showed him a theater ticket and said she'd visited the opera the evening before. Jane was very tired, so she went home and fell asleep. Harold spent his evening by the swimming pool and didn't notice anything suspicious. Can you help Detective Daniel to identify the robber? Jane was a hotel guest. Why would she go home to sleep? It was Halloween night, and Joy was preparing her house for a party. Suddenly, a group of people in scary costumes rang Joy's doorbell and shouted, Trick or treat! Joy went to the kitchen, opened the fridge, and found out that all sweets prepared for unexpected guests oh no. had disappeared. She called her three sisters and questioned them. Beth said she'd been taking a bath. Mary had been out buying decorations for the birthday party. And Erica was watching a tutorial. She wanted to have the best Halloween makeup. Which sister took the candies? Mary. She said she had bought some birthday decorations, but it was a Halloween party. Peter came back home in the middle of the working day because he had left his cell phone in the apartment. In the living room, he saw his roommate Brian lying on the couch unconscious. A paramedic was standing next to him. He said that Brian had been poisoned. Fortunately, he managed to call an ambulance before passing out. Peter took his phone and immediately called the police. The guy said that a fake paramedic had broken into his house and poisoned his roommate. How did Peter figure it out? In front of the house, there's only one car, and it's not an ambulance. On his 50th birthday, Gerald got a weird call from his ex-girlfriend, Debbie. They dated in college when Gerald was 24. Debbie confessed they had a daughter, Vicky. On her 25th birthday, Vicky learned the truth about her real father and ran away from home. Gerald promised Debbie to find Vicky and hired an investigator. Next week, the detective brought three young ladies to Gerald's house. Help the man identify his real daughter. This is the third girl. She has red hair, like Gerald, and gray eyes, like Debbie. Walter came to visit his girlfriend Becky at work. She was a barista at a scientific research center. When Walter entered the coffee shop, he saw two Beckys quarreling with each other. When they spotted the man, each of them shouted, Kick her out! She's my evil clone! Help Walter identify the real Becky. Take a look at the coffee shop logo. The logo on the uniform of the girl standing on the left looks weird. She must be the clone. Daniel and Cherry have been talking on the phone for a while. Today, they decided to go for a coffee. This is the first time they're going to meet in person. And they haven't seen any pictures of each other. Cherry texts Daniel, I will wear a pair of pink hair clips. When Daniel arrives at the coffee shop, he sees three ladies, and surprisingly, all of them are wearing pink hair clips. Can you help Daniel find his date? Take a look at the first table carefully. There are two coffee mugs. This means that this lady is already with someone. The lady sitting at the second table is already enjoying her coffee and a book. Clearly, she's not here for a date. And the third lady is wearing a beautiful dress and her table is empty. Therefore, she's Cherry. Cherry's ex-boyfriend, Drake, is a powerful magician. He doesn't want to let her go, so he kidnaps Cherry and locks her on top of a high tower. With only one window and no doors at all. Also, Drake sets a magic fire around the tower for extra protection and leaves. Cherry realizes that she has little time to escape. She looks around and sees three magic potions. The bottles are labeled. 
One would give her incredible physical strength. The other one would turn Cherry into a vampire. And the third one would let her summon any animal. Which potion should she use? Even if Cherry destroys the tower, she can do nothing with the magic fire. And no animal can help her escape. But if she becomes a vampire, she'll be able to turn into a bat and fly away. Cherry escapes and finds herself in an enchanted forest. Can you find four magical creatures here? Take a look at this cave. There's a troll hiding inside. Also, there are two pixies sitting on the flowers. And this tree is a wood goblin. Cherry goes ahead and finds a road sign. There are three routes leading to the nearest village. An immortal fire-breathing dragon is guarding the first path. The second route lies through the lands of a witch. She hates men and turns every guy who dares to enter her land into a stone statue. And the third path is a habitat for leopards. Can you help Cherry choose the best route? The second option sounds good. Cherry is a woman, so the witch has no reason to turn her into a statue because she only hates men. Cherry asks the witch to help her find the village. The witch offers a deal. If you crack my pattern riddle, I'll tell you. But if not, you'll be my servant forever. Cherry had nothing to do but agree. You can have pepper, but not salt. You can have beef, but not chicken. Carrots, broccoli, and cabbage. But no potato in any form. Oh, and you have to eat with a spoon. Can you help Cherry crack the pattern? She's only allowed items containing two of the same letters in a row. The witch helps Cherry find a road. Three drivers stop and offer a ride to the village. Can you help Cherry choose the safest option? There's a zombie hiding in the back of the first car. And there are no passenger seats in the third car. Although the second car's windshield is cracked, it's still the best choice. Finally, Cherry finds the village. This place is magical. Many amazing creatures live here. Suddenly, a half-hippo approaches Cherry and yells, Please help me. One of these guys had stolen my clothes. Can you guess who? Take a look at the dog's badge. It says Hippo. So it was the dog who stole his shirt. Cherry meets the local farmer, Timothy. He used to keep chickens in another country. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a big farm in this village and moved there. Soon, Timothy got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't get upset and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Timothy invites Cherry over for dinner at home. But unfortunately, Cherry's ex-boyfriend Drake had already found them. He captures Timothy and Cherry at the farmer's house. Suddenly, the phone rings. Drake allows Timothy to take the phone, but he can't reveal the situation. Otherwise, Drake will use his magic wand to turn them into snakes. So Timothy replies... Hey, Mom, how can I help you? I'm home and about to go to bed. If it's not an emergency, can I call you later? I'm really sleepy. 30 minutes later, the police arrive, confiscate the magic wand, and rescue the guys. How did Timothy ask for help?
he held the mute button saying everything except the words help, home, emergency, and call. The detective gives Drake a chance to get freedom. He can pass through one of these three doors. Jungles full of dangerous animals are hiding behind the first door. Behind the second door, there's a tank with ice water that is impossible to stand in for even a minute. And there's a giant fire-breathing dino behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? Drake should pick the third door. Dinos don't breathe fire, and they went extinct millions of years ago. Drake returns to his castle and discovers that someone had broken all the bottles with his precious potions in his lap. Drake gets furious and interrogates his three goblin servants. Willie says, I was cleaning the castle all day long. I didn't even enter your lab today. Tilly says, I was picking roses in the garden in the morning. Then I entered your lab to bring rose petals for your potions. Everything was fine. And Billy says, I was cooking dinner in the kitchen and then I went to the bathroom to take a quick shower. Who's lying? Tilly, he didn't pick the roses, they're still in the garden. Meanwhile, Timothy drives Cherry home. They stop to buy something on the way. Can you guess what exactly by just looking at this image? Kiwi! Then Timothy takes two pictures of Cherry. Can you find 10 differences between them? Here they are! Someone robbed Cherry's house when she was on a picnic on the 4th of July. The detective finds four suspects and questions them about what they were doing that day. Bobby, the fireman, says, I was on duty the day before. I was very tired, so I went sleeping all day long. Nick is a student. He says, I was celebrating Independence Day with my family. Rick, the manager, says, It was a holiday and I was playing games with my roommates. Then we watched TV all night. And Kyle, the postman, says, I was at the post office all day. All my colleagues saw me. The detective identifies the robber immediately. What about you? It was Kyle. He couldn't work at a post office on the 4th of July. It's a public holiday. Cherry receives her first salary and hides the cash in her closet. Cherry's three roommates are not at home at this time. So she just leaves the money and goes to the gym right away. After a while, Cherry returns home and discovers that her money had been stolen from the closet. She starts looking all over the room, but finds no clues. Suddenly, her three roommates enter the room Cherry asks each of them, Has anyone stolen my money? Bella replies, I was in college all day. I just got home from lunch and I didn't enter this room. Anna says, I came home for lunch as well, but after Bella. I opened the closet door to look for some documents, but there was no money inside. And Megan says, I had no idea that you were hiding cash in the closet. I just returned from work. You should talk to the security guard. Who's the thief? Bella must have concluded that if Cherry is searching this room, money should have been stolen only from here, so she doesn't sound suspicious. But Anna said that she had searched the closet and found no money. Meanwhile, Cherry didn't mention the closet in the first place. Therefore, Anna is the thief. Detective Smith was called to a house to investigate a burglary. Mr. Brooke claimed that someone had broken into his place and stolen his expensive watch. When the detective mm -hmm. arrived, he saw that the front door was open and there was muddy footprints leading to the living room. 
He also noticed that there was some mud on the staircase. After looking around the house, Detective Smith quickly figured out who the thief was. He went upstairs and arrested Mr. Brooks' son. Why did he do that? The detective noticed that no footprints were leading out of the house, indicating that the thief was still inside. Four friends went out for lunch. Take a look at the image and try to guess which person is the richest. It's the one on the right. The first person has a fake iPhone, so they can't be it. Then the one next to them has ripped shoes, which means she can't afford new ones. The third friend has an empty wallet. She's probably going to ask some friend to pay her part of the bill. And the fourth one has multiple black credit cards, which means they're the richest. Freddy went to the castle near his house to return a lost cat. He was greeted by an old man that invited him in. But once he stepped inside, the old man turned into an evil magician that trapped Freddy inside the castle. Then the evil magician said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, I'll let you go home. Otherwise, you'll be stuck here forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses amongst all these vegetables. Can you help Freddy? Here they are, right next to the pumpkin. For the next task, Freddy had to make a potion and the ingredients should be added in the right order. The magician gave Freddy a piece of paper with the recipe written on it. Can you help Freddy make the potion? You got to follow the colors of the cauldrons. So first of all, you need to add curry, so the potion will turn yellow. Then you add some blueberries, and it will turn green. And finally, add some tomatoes to make the potion look brown. Well done, Freddy! Freddy's third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you do it? It's sitting right here behind the floor lamp. Congrats, you just helped to free Freddy. Tuesday, Sam and Peter went to a restaurant for dinner. After eating, the bill was paid. But Sam and Peter did not pay the bill. Who paid the bill for them? Their friend, Tuesday. I didn't see that one coming. Atlas woke up in the attic of an abandoned house. He tried to find a way out of the house, but all he could do was find a room with three doors. Each door hid a different danger. The windows and floor behind the first door were made entirely of magnifying glass, which meant that the sunlight would probably burn him if he entered. The second door hid a room full of poisonous gases. And behind the third door, there was a hungry lion. What should Atlas do to escape? He should wait until it's nighttime and use the first door. Sydney told her mom that her gymnastics team would go to a sports camp for the weekend. She asked her mom to help her pack for the trip. Her mother packed everything she thought her daughter would need. When Sydney came back from the weekend, she was telling her mother all about the trip. But somewhere during the conversation, she asked her mother why she hadn't packed a toothbrush. The mother immediately knew Sydney was lying about where they had really been that weekend. How? because Sydney's mother did pack a toothbrush, but she put it under Sydney's gymnastics clothes. 
If Sydney had really gone to that camp, she would have used the clothes and found the toothbrush. Kimberly discovered three bags in an old attic along with a note. The note said that there was $1 million inside one of the bags. It also said that the two other bags were empty. She only had one chance to figure out which bag had the cash. Kim knew that only one of the messages written on the bags was true. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. On the second bag, it was written, the cash is not here. The last bag read, the cash is in the second bag. If you were Kimberly, which bag would you choose? You should choose the first bag. If only one of the clues is true, then the money is in the first bag. Becca had just arrived from a two-week trip to Egypt. During her trip, she bought a beautiful emerald and wanted to show it to some of her friends. She decided to throw a party just for her closest friends. The next day, she noticed that the emerald was gone. Becca immediately decided to call a detective to help her find the thief. She showed him some of the pictures she had taken the night before. The detective hmm. took a quick look and already had a pretty good idea of who had done it. Take a look at these pictures. How did the detective find the culprit? Look at that girl wearing a hat. At 1 a.m., her hat is flat, but at 2 a.m., her hat suddenly turned pointy, weirdly imitating the shape of an emerald. It must have been her. It's a rainy evening, and Dylan is driving back home. He passes through a bus stop where three people ask him for a ride. Dylan only has one seat in his car to offer, but he really wants to help all of those people. There's an old lady that looks very cold. There's a doctor who claims he needs to get to the hospital for a quick appointment. And a woman that Dylan has a crush on. What's the best arrangement Dylan can make to help everyone? Dylan could lend his car to the doctor so that he could drive the old lady home. Dylan could wait at the bus stop with the girl he has a crush on until the doctor comes back and gives him his car back. Susan found out that her favorite pop band was playing a private concert for VIP clients in a luxurious club. She decided to sneak inside the club through the backyard. But unfortunately, Susan faced a strict guard behind the door. He refused to let her inside without a password. But luckily for her, there was a hint in the guard's t-shirt. The hint was 2 infinity plus B D. Susan deciphered the hint and was allowed in the concert. Can you guess what the password was? It was to infinity and beyond. One afternoon, Nicole found her father, Frank, in the living room, really worried about an anonymous text he had gotten. Frank was a private investigator, and he had just received a message revealing the address of the town's most dangerous criminal, Dirty Jack. He decided to go check the area, even if he didn't know what the criminal looked like. The address turned out to be an old warehouse, and when he busted inside, he found four people sitting at a table playing poker. The four people were a carpenter, a truck driver, a mechanic, and a fireman. Without any hesitation or communication, Frank arrested the fireman. How did he know that he was a criminal? The fireman was the only male in the room. The rest of the poker players were women. Bobby and Rachel decided to go grab a cup of coffee. But when their orders arrived, Bobby's coffee came with a fly inside of it. He called the waiter and asked him to change his cup. The waiter brought another cup of coffee. But two seconds later, Bobby called the waiter again and said, Hey, that's the same cup. 
How did he know? Because Bobby had already put sugar in his coffee, and when he tasted the liquid inside the new cup, it already had sugar inside. A new ice cream parlor opens up in Matt's neighborhood. Yeah. He goes there to check it out. It's pretty crowded because they offer one free ice cream serving to each customer. Mm. Matt meets a pretty lady named Kitty in the line. He falls in love with her right away, but unfortunately, she's already married. Ooh. Can you find her husband among these guys? It's the second man. He's the only one who doesn't hold any ice cream. And Kitty is holding two ice cream servings, one for herself and one for her spouse. The next day, Matt missed his alarm. And now he's late for work. His boss is going to be furious. Matt might even get fired. But wait a minute. It turned out that the big boss is out of the office today. He's having a last minute business trip. So Matt can relax. Yeah. But suddenly, the boss calls him on the phone. Hello. Where are you? You got 10 minutes to get to the office. Matt replies, I am in the subway right now. Hmm. Well, I got something I need you to do for me. Call me when you're in the office. Matt is a pretty genius liar. Yeah. How did he fool his boss? Matt had a subway noise track on his computer. He played it when he was on the phone with the boss. Clever. Matt enters the local bakery on the way to the office. Hello. The cook brings two trays with fresh tartines. Take your time and try to spot 10 differences between them. Ready to see the answer? Here they are. What about these two breakfasts? Can you find 10 differences? Over here. Matt arrives at the office. Oh no. Oh. Someone has changed the password on their corporate computer. It consists of seven digits. Matt texts his coworker and asks about the new code. He receives the following reply. Can you help him figure out the code? The number of fingers implies the right digit in the password. So Matt should enter 1, 0, 5, 2, 3, 1, and 0. Matt is an illustrator. His boss sends some files and asks him to separate the images and add some colors. Oh. Unfortunately, all the layers are merged. Can you spot six different objects in this picture? Here they are. What about this one? Can you spot 11 objects? Over here. Matt's sister, Ashley, is getting married. He arrives at the event, and she asks him to take a picture of her with some friends. But someone pranks the bride in the middle of the photo shoot and spills paint on her beautiful dress. Can you guess who did it by just looking at this picture? It's the man on the right. He has a rope in his hands, and it's tied to the bucket. Ashley changes and the wedding goes great. After the ceremony, they throw a party in a restaurant. This place is very popular among the newlyweds. Matt faces three brides in the lobby and spots the fake one right away. Hello. What about you? It's the third lady. She's wearing regular jeans and sneakers under her dress. And also, she's wearing a wig. She must be just trying on a costume. The wedding dinner begins, and the waiters serve the first course. But suddenly, the lights turn off for 15 seconds. When the power is back again, Matt finds out that his golden watch is gone. He questions four suspects. Karen says, I was eating the wedding cake when the light turned off. It was delicious. Nick says, I was talking on the phone with my grandpa. When it got dark, 
I just continued our conversation. David says, I was washing my hands in the bathroom. And Stella says, I was taking pictures of the food for my Instagram. The local cuisine is so fancy. Who's lying? Karen. She said she was eating the cake. But take a look at the wedding cake. It hasn't been cut yet. The dinner has just started. It so happened that Matt is spending the Christmas holidays with three of his ex-girlfriends. They go to a fancy ski resort in Alaska. It was the first day of vacation when Matt was found poisoned in his bedroom. The police interrogate his ex-girlfriends. All the three ladies went away that day, and Matt stayed in the hotel for a nap. Megan says, I was shopping all day long. Lola says, I went to the beach to sunbathe and swim. When I returned, I found Matt lying unconscious. And Sophie says, I went to the local coffee shop to write my novel. Nobody wanted to join me. Who's lying? Lola, it's Christmas time. So it should be very cold in Alaska. She couldn't swim and sunbathe outdoors. Finally, Matt gets better and leaves the hospital. Yeah. He returns to the ski resort and takes a look at the mountains. What are they doing wrong? This guy is riding a snowboard. He doesn't need ski poles. After the Alaska trip, Matt gets a new job in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. He finds a great apartment and moves in. Three neighbors knock on his door to greet the new neighbor. One of these ladies is a real witch. Can you spot who exactly? The first lady brought a cake. It looks pretty innocent. The third lady brought a plant. Looking good too. But the second woman brought a basket with food. And there's a snake crawling around her gifts. Matt wakes up in a weird maze in the middle of the night. The only way to escape is to walk through this labyrinth. But unfortunately, there are four dangerous creatures waiting for him on the way. First of all, there's a Gorgon who turns everybody she sees into stone. Secondly, a werewolf. It's a full moon, so he's very hungry. The third creature is a tree goblin. He can grab people with his strong branches and it's impossible to get out. And finally, there's a siren who can use her singing to make you do anything she wants. Luckily, Matt has four magic potions which can be helpful. Each potion has a 24-hour effect. If you spill the first potion on anybody, they'll become silent. The second potion will make any creature very weak. The third potion turns anyone into a vegan. And the fourth potion causes blindness. Can you help Matt distribute the potions among the creatures correctly? Matt should use the silence potion to neutralize the siren. Use the blinding potion against the gorgon, turn the werewolf into a vegan, and weaken the tree goblin. The next day Matt receives a postcard. There's a note hidden in this face. Can you figure out the message? The features of this face form the word liar. Matt purchases a tour to see the sights of the state. He takes a nap on the train. After a while, he wakes up and sees that his tablet is missing. Matt interrogates four tourists nearby. Liam says, Sorry, I was listening to the music, and my eyes were closed. I don't know who did it. Willow says, I think it was Ronald. He's very suspicious. Why would he need so many gadgets on a tourist trip? Ronald says, I have a bunch of my own gadgets. I don't need your old, outdated tablet. And Mary says, I'm sorry, but I was sleeping. Can you spot the thief? It was Mary. She hid Matt's tablet inside her magazine. Matt goes to the dining car. There he sees four tourists speaking an unknown language, so Matt can't understand them. But still, he manages to spot this lady's boyfriend right away. Can you see him too? It's the second guy. They have similar tattoos on their necks. Matt wakes up locked in an abandoned house. He finds three doors, but only one of them leads to freedom, and he has only one chance to find it. 
Hungry tigers are waiting behind the first door. There's a big fire behind the second door. And a werewolf is hiding behind the third door. How can Matt escape? He should just wait until the fire goes out.